So, opening up the meeting, welcome to the uh, September 17th, 2020, Ingham Road District um, meeting. Uh, this meeting is being held remotely as an alternate means of public access pursuant to an order issued by the Governor of Massachusetts dated March 12th, 2020, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the Town of Ingham in accordance with the open meeting law. Now that I get that out of the way, um, the new business, um, we do have um, some new appointments to the commission. Um, one is that Justin Abel has been appointed as a voting member, uh, representing the planning board designee, which was actually uh, Virginia's spot. Um, and then taking Justin's spot as the alternate planning board designee member is Marianne Donaldson. Virginia's sister. Uh, so welcome, Marianne. Uh, we're excited thank to have you. your board. And uh, thank you, Justin, for your continued uh, commitment to the commission. I think that's what keeps this town running, is people being involved. I would agree. Um, so just to um, other business before we get started, are there any uh, conflicts with any of the members? And I'll just, now that Justin um, is the new voting member, the voting members are now Catherine, Carol, Hans, Justin, and myself. So um, are there any conflicts um, regarding anybody in the um, applications tonight? Nope. Everybody's good? Nope. No conflicts. Okay. All right. Why don't we um, get started then? Um, so the first uh, hearing tonight is 37 Bearing Road. Um, welcome back. Um, I know you uh, sort of made some adjustments to the plan, I think, based on some of the conversations we've had to date. So um, yep. why don't you walk us through? Sure. I'll just share my screen here. Try that again. Post-disabled screen sharing. Sherry will take care of you. Can everyone see the plans on the screen? Yes. All right. So 37 Fairing Road, uh, there's two new sheets here, um, both in large floor plans of the first and second floor. Those are A2 and A4. Um, we dialed back the design a bit uh, to remove the connection to the garage. Um, so now our proposal includes a, a porch off of the driveway side. Um, the entry is recessed past the um, corner, the rear corner of the building, uh, two feet. And the proposal also includes a porch in the back. Um, you can see that on the first floor plan, um, the entry porch off the drive was three, but 11 feet. Um, it's set back, as I mentioned, the two feet so that we can read the corner um, of this rear corner of the existing building um, through the porch and up through the addition. Uh, moving along to the second floor, this is the enlarged first floor plan uh, to give you a better view of what's going on here. Um, on the second floor, the layout hasn't changed from the original proposal. Um, you can see that the roof lines below are, are a bit simplified um, because we don't have that connection to the garage anymore. Um, so really you're just looking at a shed roof below the second floor bedroom windows. Um, when looking at the elevations, um, the proposed porch is just in line with the existing bay window. So what you're seeing on this front elevation uh, is just a bit of that shed roof uh, of the proposed porch. Um, coming back and continuing on the rear, continuing up the rear uh, facade of the building. Uh, moving right along to the right elevation, you can see that the um, entry door is centered on this porch um, and the really the trim has been uh, dialed, back, dialed back a bit. Um, we still have the same height alignments. Um, so for example, the roof edge of the porch is aligned with this um, existing bay window roof, the hip roof of the bay window. 
Um, this continues straight across and keeping a simple look. Um, you can see that there's two double hung windows here uh, in keeping with the proportion of, of this exterior wall which we're proposing. Um, and then in the back, you can see that there's this small roof coverage um, for the rear entry door. Uh, moving along to the rear elevation, the design hasn't changed much. Um, obviously, the connection to the garage is gone, but the shed roof over the porch continues, and this becomes a gable roof in the back. Um, and you can see how um, the, the entry porch is situated towards the rear there. Um, the following images are some renderings um, of this new proposal. Um, and this is the side view with the garage omitted so that we can get an idea of um, the entire building facade without the garage in the way of the view. Of the, view. Um, the cut sheets are here too. Um, nothing's really changed. I did include um, the mahogany entry door um, and the side light selection. Um, that's the only addition to this sheet A9. That I will give it back to you for comments. Great, thank you, Brad, and <clears throat> thank you for uh, listening to um, our discussions last time in responding um, to the comments. You know, yeah. I think looking at this, um, you know, in, in in my view, I think you you responded well to the concerns. Um, certainly, my concerns. Um, you know with the building, the house's addition in relationship to the garage. So, um, you know, I think this is a great improvement um, on the plan. Um, and certainly, I think, um, uh, takes into account um, the concerns that I had regarding the addition here. So um, I think this looks great. Um, so I think, you know, with that sort of open up to the, to the commission um, to get thoughts on these revisions to the plans. I've been holding back just to uh, keep it from saying how wonderful it looks. I think you've responded to everything and I think it, it really, it looks like it's been there for hundreds of years. Yeah. It's wonderful. Thank you. Carol? I think the family's really going to love that porch uh, overlooking the diminutive backyard. Um, it brings to mind some of the little gardens of Beacon Hill, where you know they have such tiny space back there. I, I can't guess what it is, 30 by 60 or something, but a lot of people have done a spot like that. And I think by focusing the kitchen and that porch back toward the backyard, I think there's a lot of possibilities for them to put in gardens or Thank you. barbecue areas, whatever. I think they you know, really like it. Carol? Anybody else? I think it looks fine. Okay, great. Thank you, Robert. Collins, it looks like you're, or Ben. Fantastic job, Brad. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Hans. Uh, just one question. The, yeah. um, the uh, columns on the porch, what's the, what's the, what are the dimensions? Um, They're those? Eight, eight inch by eight inch. Um, so I was trying to keep those uh, not uh, not too really bold. I, I kind of wanted to keep a slender, more, more slender column there. Okay, so you were and and you were trying to put you know two together, two together in order to break it up. Was that was yeah that? yeah so that the um, to kind of break down the rectilinear look of of the porch without the columns. Um, this kind of brought the proportion together a little bit. Um, okay. Without the columns, it was kind of, um, it, what spoke to me is that it really needed the double columns. What, did so, it look so what you're seeing on the right side is actually a pile aster. Um, just to, to the right of the entry door. Yeah. Pile aster and a column. What did it look like when they were beefed up a little bit? Um, they were too thick and they took up too much of the porch itself. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't have a lot of space to work with there. 
um, and I, I was keeping a, an eight inch uh, column uh, consistent with the side porch and the rear porch. So there are eight inch columns everywhere. All the way around? Okay. Yep. I don't know if anybody else in the commission has a thought on that, but that was the only question I had. Thank you for all the changes uh, that you made to the, uh, to the plans. Thank you. Any other thoughts? What's next? Thank you. I think it balances the um, top heaviness of the house, gives it a grounding. I think it's really a been very effective um, addition and experience. Well, I think, you know, it sounds like this general consensus here on the overall, I don't know if the commission has any questions about any details, any, any windows, anything like that, or is, are you okay with what's been proposed here? Okay. Okay. Would somebody uh, like to make a motion for 37 Ferry Road? Mike, I can do that. Sure. Okay. I'd like to make a motion for a certificate of appropriateness for 37 Ferry Road um, for the demolition of the, um, the, the rear right portion of the existing house and to construct a, a new uh, addition and porch um, to, to the right and to the rear of the home uh, based on drawings submitted September 10th, uh, 2020. Um, uh, all materials used to match existing um, color to match existing. Um, uh, all materials to be to be wood. Correct. Yes, correct. All materials to be wood. Um, new windows to um, based on uh, cut sheets provided. These are um, ultimate wood double hung magnum windows by Marvin. So there are um, all wood windows, and uh, the ultimate is a uh, true divided light window. Correct. True divided light window um, all throughout. Um, uh, roofing to match to match the existing. Uh, you're going to do two doors, correct? Yes, this side off the driveway and the rear door. Both to be mahogany. Yes. Uh, both doors to be mahogany, um, cut sheet provided on A9. Um, um, any, uh, any lighting to be used at this time? Um, there's going to be recess lighting um, in the porch ceiling. Uh, it's nope. the extent of our discussions. Okay, so no lanterns or anything like that at this point. Uh, not that we've discussed. Okay, recess lighting to be um, to be included in the in the porch area. That's it. That's, it. That's good. Okay, uh, is there a second? Second. Um, actually, I'll second. Can Robert? Robert? I think I'll second. Uh, Robert wasn't a voting member, so I'll second. Okay. Second. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Robert. That's okay. Um, okay, uh, Catherine, how do you vote? Aye. Carol, how do you vote? Aye. Hans, how do you vote? Aye. Justin, how do you vote? Aye. And that's an aye for me. Great. Thank you. Thank you for um, all your work on this. I think you've uh, done a great job here. I look forward to seeing it. Great. Thank you very much. So the next hearing, actually, we're, we've got, we're actually running a little early. Um, so I think we've got a 
I do have a few fun facts. Okay, let's hear it. Fortunately. <laughs> so, let's see. I'm going back to um, August the 31st, which in, um, it was a Monday, in 1897, Thomas Edison patented the kinetograph in early movie Now, the next fun fact is uh, Sunday, the 6th of September. And um, don't forget, this, my, um, my calendar is from Chinola, so it's all Detroit, right? So anyway, so the Beatles perform in Detroit, Michigan for the first time at Olympia Stadium in 1964. Wow. I know. And was that part of their original um, tour? tour? I have no idea. I don't know. Um, okay, then we get to, ooh, this is interesting. On Tuesday, the 15th of September, in 1978, American boxer Muhammad Ali wins uh, wins the third world. I'm sorry, I can't read because my light is bad. Um, wins the world heavyweight boxing title for the third time, and he's the first fighter to ever do that. You know, pretty amazing. <laughs> okay, so enough of that. I think we're good. <laughs> we still have two minutes, Andrea. That's all right. I think we're good. We'll make Sean sing or something. I know. Do not want. I'd like to hear a few more uh, tidbits oh. about Cassius Clay or Muhammad Ali, depending on how you want to refer to him. That's right. Well, he, was, he was Cassius beforehand, right? That's what he was. He was, yeah. Yeah. He was. Okay, well, why don't, we, why don't we get on to the next one? So thank you all for um, entertaining our fun facts as we were running early <laughs> today on our um, schedule um, to make sure that we can get attendees if they plan on joining at 6.50 for the next. So um, here we are, uh, 329 uh, North Street to install a fence um, for um, around the pool fence. So I think... John, I think it sounds like you're representing tonight. I am uh, a Sean Peppin, Sean Peppin, Christian Nancy, keep pictured. 222 North Street, present for Gene Raymond, who wanted to be here, but he couldn't. I'm standing in for him. This is for his property at uh, 329 North Street. Um, he's intending to put a pool in the backyard, which you really don't see. Um, if you want me to share anything on my computer, on my laptop here. I think I can do it if you want me to. If it's easy enough to see. That would be good, Sean. See what you've already got, then that's, that might, yeah. yeah Let's, would that be good? Yes. Oh, are there any? I can share the screen if you want. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me do this. I'll share the screen and let me get there. See if it gets there. It might take a couple seconds for some reason. Sorry. Uh, you can always sing, Sean. <laughs> again, I do not think I could hum a few bars or something. <laughs> Tell a few jokes or stories, but I'm not so sure about the singing. Oh, goodness. Let's rotate this thing. Okay. This is the first page that we sent over. Uh, okay. uh, and it really yeah. shows so the existing. We're, we're not seeing a, a drawing yet. We're seeing sort of a desktop. Uh, you are. Yeah, Windows Explorer yeah. view. Yeah, let me double check and let's see why that's not happening. Yeah, I think you might be sharing a different 
window on your computer rather than uh, a awesome. screen? Yeah, let me try that. You still there? You still not seeing it? Not Mark seeing it yet. Still seeing windows. Let me shut that down. Yeah, it's okay, let me take yeah. another look and see if I can get it. Oh, in the existing conditions plan that you have, how about that? Do you see anything yet? No, yeah. I think you're sharing the wrong window. Okay, that's probably the case. Let me see if I've got, um, I don't want to click out of the whole. You know, yeah, try doing a stop share and then. Okay, let me do that. Turn it again. Yeah. Pause the share, perhaps. And then let me open it up. And then let me try. Oh, I think you might be right about that. What about now? Pause, hold on. There we go. Yay! Go, Justin. Notice I needed the assistance uh, substantially on that. Well, we're here to help. <laughs> I can appreciate it. I need all the help I can get. So, so what, um, and I'll, I'll kind of float around and let me know if I'm, I'm uh, moving too quickly or what have you or not fast enough. So we have North Street, and then we have Jean and B's house right here, and it's pretty steep slope up. What I'll probably do is um, I'm going to reduce it so you can see also the photos. Um, but it's quite a bit of distance, about 140 feet from right around the street up to the area that we're talking about, which is really along in here. And so Gene is intending to put a pool, and I'll show that on the next one. The existing conditions are that it's a steep driveway. There's some plantings. There's an existing stone wall that we did. It must be 12 years ago now or something like that. Stone wall and steps that are in here. Um, the driveway continues on into the back of the property. And what Gene and B wanted to do was to put a pool area in here. We have that on the next plan that I'll, sh I'll share. But really that piece of uh, that piece of fence or screening is really right in here. And there's already a retaining wall. There's a field stone retaining wall here. And then next door on Jay Apolito's property, or it's technically on Gene's, but it shares it with with Jay, they kind of share a planting island. And this is a field stone wall also. So it goes about two feet tall. And this is about two to three feet tall right here also. And as you go up the hill, it starts to decrease in size. But the area where we're working is really right in here. And then ultimately some fencing beyond. And I really don't know how much of that you'll see. Um, if you look at from the existing conditions, let me widen that out a little bit. See if I can get you something to look at. Uh, this is the distance from quite a ways away, which you really can't see a whole lot. Um, <clears throat> I can still get it. Kind of looking up. I'm going to try to make it larger. So that's the driveway looking up from. Not really all the way at the bottom of the hill, but fairly close. So the air we're working is way back in here. I walked up about 100 feet, and I apologize. There's always a car here, but it's really right in that area, just in front of the car. There's an existing wall here that carries up the slope that matches this wall. And so we were just going to work in this area, so it almost takes up the exact space of the car, to be honest. It, it carries straight across. Um, See if I can get the other photo for you. Yeah, and that's really, again, in the area where you see the other field stone wall between the two properties. It's heavily vegetated. So we're going to be working right at kind of where the front of the car is. So it's, you don't really see a whole lot from down at North Street, but it is somewhat visible, especially if there's not a car there. So let's see if I can get the other proposed plan out here. And I'll get you there. See if you can. Um, I'll see if I can share this window also. I don't think I've got share. Run the same. 
see if you can see this one. It shows an elevation of the house a little bit. Can you see that? No, your screen is not sharing. Okay, let me find it. What I'm going to do is get to that. And drawing I was going to show, and bear with it. You're not seeing that yet either, are you? John, are you looking for something other than what's in the packet that we all no, have? No, I'm not really. So if you have the packet right there, that will yeah. still get you um, the proposed plan, the landscape plan. And maybe I just can't share it tonight. Um, well, you can just sort of talk your way through it. through it. Yeah. Let's, why don't I do that? Um, so, so as I was showing you, uh, uh, over toward the corner of the house, the back corner of the house is where we're intending for this screen fence to go. But instead of doing just a fence, Gene wanted to do kind of a shingle wall with a, with a door in it almost like a cedar gate or cedar door with a pergola over the top of it. So you'll be able to see on that second page the elevation, a couple of elevation drawings we're looking at doing. So it really just looks like a little bit of an extension of the house. And it'll be cedar shingles and left to uh, age gray. Gene reminded me like our hair. So I really appreciate that from him. But aging to gray for the cedar shingle uh, fence or screen with a little uh, pergola over it. We're going to put grape slats and trellis on it to grow some plant material over the top of it. So your intention of it was to be a little more dense than a fence, but also to be screened really heavily with vegetation on those uh, lattice structures that we showed. And so that was the intent. If you look up on the enlargement plan, it's on the right-hand side of that second page, on the existing stone wall that's there, um, it recedes away from the house. So I, I'm not so sure that you can see it. Um, and it excuse me, it recedes away from the street. But we were going to do a cedar board fence that turns into a board fence with mesh, or shall I say the, the uh, cedar frame with mesh. So well, that was what we were intending to do there. And that's really all that's visible, I think, if at all, from North Street. So I think it's really subtle. Um, I don't know if there's a whole lot more to, to uh, tell you about it other than what you see on the page um, if you want to, if you have any questions about it at all. If it's clear enough, hopefully it's clear enough with what we have here yeah. on those foundation uh, drawings. Yeah, I'm having a little trouble. The entry gate enlargement. Yeah. That, so if you moving exactly. the that's not moving the stone wall. Right? No, all the stone wall stays the same. No, all we're doing is we're going to just work right around the stone, and so we're using this pool enclosure. Uh, so we have to get our six feet in total. Um, in terms of the uh, gate itself and this fence that's going to be up on the wall. So if you look at the entry gate enlargement plan, um, what you can do is uh, I try to get that back there. I don't want it on my computer right now. Oh, Sean, you, I think you muted yourself, Sean. Yeah, you're muted. My wife would say that the better for it to be uh, to be muted, but if you look at the plan, um, we see existing driveway, and above that on the plan, it says entry gate to the Darbor, and that's essentially what that elevation drawing is intended to show. Um, again, there's a uh, stone walkway that's going to carry, and there's currently a stone walkway right now, and that's really not changing. Um, there's an existing stone wall to the right hand side that is on the left-hand side of the driveway. And that's just a little low stone 
foam wall from the driveway, but it drops down into that space behind the house. That's kind of a sunken pit back there. And so along that wall, we were going to do a cedar board fence um, just with bleaching oil on it, just to age natural silver, and ultimately be a cedar frame with mesh as you get even further back. Uh, so it's um, as you get back toward kind of where the pool area is going to be. Uh, I don't know how visible that's really going to be, frankly, from North Street. It and is where quite is the drop? I'm sorry, where's the drop you were talking about where it sinks into a pit? Is that... Yeah, so if you look straight, um, if you're looking at the plan, yeah. uh, assume you're driving on the driveway, yeah, and you continue and to see, drive by the side of the house. I can yeah, see when you look to the left, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, that whole rear area right now is like a water feature. If you look to the left of yeah. that, that's all kind of a sunken area as it is today. So that doesn't really change at all, other than that instead of being a water feature, he's going to do a pool. That, that, that itself will not be visible from, from the street at all. That's still at the lower level, uh, so it's not visible. The pool, really the intent of the entry gate of the arbor is that it's, um, it's got to be six foot tall. It's got to be a pool enclosure, technically, uh, but it's to make it feel a little more architectural or just to not feel so much like a fence, as well as with the lattice structures. The intent is to plant the lattice structures and do some climbing vines on those lattice structures to really make it feel like a garden feature, to be honest. It's really intended to feel like a garden entry. And that was what he wanted to go with. Hey, Sean, I have a quick yeah. question. So just for clarity, um, the, the fence on the right side of the pool uh, it starts out as a cedar plank, and then it turns into the, the, the cedar posts with mesh? Correct. Cedar frame with mesh. Cedar frame. Yes, so that's correct. Where does it turn into where the you mesh? That break. Pretty much where you see, um, after the first couple sections, it'll turn into the mesh. Oh, so there's cedar. three sections of the cedar plank, and then it turns into the mesh. That's correct. We try to show that, um, we try to break it up and show it there a little bit. You can see it change, uh, probably about two sections is what that cedar board's going to be. And that'll just be straight cedar that will uh, age to silver. All the cedar elements will age to silver. Uh, all the shingles are going to age to silver. No stain or paint. Uh, the trellis, more of that classic, um, Cape sort of trellis is also going to be cedar, and that will age to silver also. But that will be planted, too. So, Sean, on the um, first page of your proposal, um, the lower right-hand corner, the photograph in the lower right-hand corner, yeah. you see a bunch of plantings to the left of the driveway. Are those, those are going to be inside the fence? So those, are, yeah, those would still be, um, if you go to a little bit beyond, there's going to be a handful of plantings before you get to the fence. Mm -hmm. so if you see the fence is uh, more toward the rear of the house. It's on that back corner of the house. Um, so. Are where the light you, post is, maybe? What's that again? Is there a light post, I think? Yeah, exactly. There is right now. And so we were going to have, uh, and that's it that's right on the corner there, and then we were going to have a little bit of planting in that raised wall area. See, you, you see all those plantings that are tucked in that little, uh, well, right in that little retaining wall space you're talking about, they're to the right of the vehicle. Those will stay there. Those stay, those are still in a raised planter. That raised planter stays as is. That will stay as is. So how are you, they, how are you going to secure the, um, the posts to the stone wall? Is it going to sit on top of the stone wall? Yeah, so those will get doweled in. So essentially those get drilled into the wall and they get anchored with a metal, uh, a metal post inside the wooden post. It's hydraulic cement that is used. That's pretty typical of what we can do. Thank you. You're welcome. Carol? Uh, I went down there today um, just to see which house it was and get a view of oh. it and yeah. got out of the car and walked around and I don't think very much of this is going to show at all. Probably not. Really, up a very steep driveway, there's a lot of big 
full plantings, full size trees in the way and so forth. Um, I think the idea of a trellis look is, is charming and I like the door and I think it's going to be fine, but I don't think we're going to see it. So I'm not sure that we need to go over I, details. I drove by also today, as I do uh, for every meeting, and um, I couldn't see anything. If it's okay with the neighbors, it certainly is okay from, from the street. Yeah. No problem. Um, any other commission thoughts? Well, I, I would tend to agree. I think it's so far, so far up the hill there that, you know, even from these photos, you kind of have a hard time. Never mind actually walking by or driving by. So I think it's, I, I, I would agree with uh, what Carol was stating. All right. Uh, well, if there's no more questions or comments, um, would somebody like to make a motion? I'll, try, I'll go for making a motion. Um, I'd like to make a motion for a certificate of appropriateness for 329 North Street uh, to build a screening screen wall and fence with arbor at the side of the house at that location. Uh, closure is intended to uh, be part of protecting a proposed pool installation. And so I guess this is a, pool, a proposed pool installation as well. Uh, let's see. Proposed improvements and plan as described. And plans submitted. And the date on these, August 26, 2020. Let's see. I'm not sure there are any other details that we should need to specify, if, given the uh, that our opinion that it's, it's, it's out of view. The only thing I might suggest, and I can't see, maybe you have it written on the plan, Sean, um, that the heater will be the weather the cedar yeah you could do uh let me think yeah we would have just said white cedar shingles uh we list the finish um but we could say natural no we can just include like good that's fine we can just include it justin in the um uh, in the motion so and we'll add on to the motion uh Cedar shingles left natural. Okay. All right. Um, is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, Catherine, how do you vote? Aye. Carol, how do you vote? Aye. Oz, how do you vote? Aye. Justin, how do you vote? Aye. And aye for me as well. Okay. Thank so, you. Thanks, you guys. Have a good night. Thank you for everything you're doing. Thanks, I appreciate Joe. it. It's not easy. Thank you. Okay. Um, next hearing is the first of two uh, for the Bathing Beach, um, 95 Otis Street. Uh, the first one is for a mm -hmm. fence. Okay. Debbie, are you here? I, think I am. Yay! I am putting a video. Nope. Oh, my goodness, that's wonderful. I actually tuned in at 6.30, and I was going to say nice things about the redesign of 37 appearing since I'm at 47, but I didn't have that opportunity. Well, we agreed with you. Yes, you did. <laughs> I knew how I felt. Italian Nate is all about the duality. So the um, yeah the first item uh, is a, a proposed six foot high uh, PVC uh, fence that would be painted. Uh, this runs across the uh, ground mounted uh, mechanical equipment that faces three A. And I don't have the capability of putting up a 
PDF and don't know if Sherry is there and able to do that. I can try to do that. Yeah. All right, Sherry. Right. So originally, uh, in our early submission for the building as a whole, we we showed shown a uh, a continuous shed that was built into the uh, into the building. But uh, there's a lot of HVAC equipment that needs free air circulation, and also the trash barrels. So there will be uh, a substantial looking uh, vertical sided six foot high uh, fence that will be painted to match the trim of the building. Uh, so it seems like a, a straightforward solution to uh, hiding mechanical equipment. There's nothing on the roof except uh, an exhaust fan that's in an enclosed uh, surround, which uh, which you can actually see in the elevation. Uh, so this, uh, you know, for the kitchen that requires a, a great deal of exhaust and uh, HVAC equipment, uh, this is a good solution. Pretty straightforward. And there'll be, you know, trash enclosure here with access doors. But it's a nicely detailed fence. We do have, as I think most of you know, uh, PVC trim and uh, railing uh, and uh, you know window trim and eaves and, and gutters, uh, outer gutters, uh, wood shingles. But uh, it. You know, it's a municipal building. There's no way that a wood fence would be able to be kept up in this environment. Uh, you know, a, uh, like that. So it seems in keeping with what we're doing with the rest of the building. And uh, I think you'll all agree that that, that is is pretty uh, comfortable on the site. And uh, the trim color is a Everything is, is grayish except the you know, shingles, and uh, all seems to fit, fit together. Thanks, Abby. Yep. Mr. Chairman? Yep. Um, if I may, I just want to point out that we have, I know Alan Peralt from the Trustees of the Bathing Geeks is here, and perhaps J.R. Fry, I saw him earlier, who's our town engineer. Um, but I don't know that he's with us now, so just don't know if they wanted to add anything. Sure. Welcome, Alan. Sure. If you'd like to add anything, please do. Sure. Uh, thanks, Andrea. Um, I think first, I want to say how enjoyable it was working with SEVI in the historic district and getting this building uh, to be as attractive as it is. <clears throat> I think to me, good architecture is when a building looks like it's always been there. Uh, and I think Sevi achieved that with uh, he and Mark with this design. And uh, I also want to want to point out to the uh, commission that actually the cost of this fencing and the cost of the sign, other than the sign ban we're going to have for ourselves that's upcoming, is actually being fronted by Greg Acera, who's going to be the vendor of, um, of the snack stand, and has been a great partner for us. And I told him early on when he started looking at the sign and the fencing, I said, do me a favor and just go through Seve. Uh, I said, anything that has to be done has to be in keeping with the building. He's 100% on board, by the way. But I said, the best way to do that is to go through Seve, who has the respect of the Historic District Commission and understands the integrity of the building. Um, so I think what Seve's called for, I think even the the gray trim on this building and on the skirt boards, we've been really concerned about the aesthetic look of this building overall. And I think the gray color we, that was picked, the, the gutters and the downspouts all match. I think we've actually called it King of Gray. Um, it's mm -hmm. just a, a nice job of, of muting something and not drawing too much attention to the things other than the red cedar shingles, which I think make this a very distinctive looking building. So 
So it's been kind of a pleasure to work with SEVI and uh, in this project. Thank you, Alan. So I think just, you know, some context for the commission members, particularly for those who um, may not have been um, part of the original approvals for this um, project, but we did um, uh, allow for PVC in certain areas like trim, um, as Sevi described, as well as uh, railings in certain locations, particularly based on its um, location and proximity to the water um, and sort of additional maintenance that may be required um, based on that. Uh, and so uh, we did allow that um, in this uh, situation. I think um, in, in looking at this application, however, I'm not sure that um, the PVC fence falls in the same category. Um, and I don't know that um, I don't think I don't agree that it's appropriate for this um, application. Uh, we don't um, we typically don't approve uh, PVC fencing in, in any uh, situation. And I think given the prominence of where this is on 3A and uh, the size of the fence and its location, I don't know that um, PVC um, is is appropriate um, in this situation. Um, you know, and I, I guess the other item I might ask is in regard to the height. Um, and I, I drove by, um, I've driven by that many times, and I think it seems like the highest object there are probably the dumpsters that are there. They seem to stick up a little bit higher than the HVAC equipment. So, you know, I wonder if this, um, you know, if there's flexibility in the height on this fence, whether it could come down or whether it was a fence that had, you know, if it was a four or five foot fence with a, you know, topper on it that started to sort of bring the mass of that fence down a little bit where you'd still be screening the equipment behind it, but it wouldn't be such a tall, um, a tall fence, um, certainly a PVC in that location. So, um, you know, I think those are my initial thoughts about this. So I'd want to hear, um, you know, thoughts from uh, my fellow commissioners uh, as well. So um, with that, I'll open that up to, to others. Hans? Uh, thanks, Mike. I think that was um, very well said. Um, yeah, I, I think this, this building is, um, has really turned out well. And I think there's uh, there's so much exposure here on 3A with so much potential plastic, um, almost the whole length of the build, building. I think it would really detract from all the good work that's been done here. So um, I would encourage you to look at wood or or something, maybe in the composite um, area, um, if we're concerned about durability. Maybe that's something we have some flexibility there. But the uh, the PVC is just um, I think it's just going to be a little bit too. Um, I think it's really going to catch the eye, and it's going to draw away from the, uh, you know, all the good work that's been done on this building. So maybe there's a, another material that um, looks a little bit more weathered, uh, that looks a little more grayish, uh, that could be used in place of this. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Uh, I'm going to jump in and agree with both uh, fellow commission members that I, I, I really can't imagine PVC being appropriate for that location. And it's, it's, it's so prominent, it's so large, and oh, as well, uh, if there is a, a possibility of lowering the fence, just just to be a little less fence mass. But I, I agree about the PVC. Thanks, Carol, I agree with everything that's been said. I, I'm just looking at the other map of uh, that came with the request for the the sign, and I'm wondering how the dumpsters get. Empty. Is, a, is there a path there that trucks can go around to the back to get into the dumpsters? I can't tell from the sketch. Uh, Carol, I can address that. Hi. Um, they're actually not really dumpsters. It's almost more like you, you see in Hingham Square where they're large barrels that have uh -oh. wheels. Yeah. So basically they're going to have to wheel them out and they're going to have to have like three or four of them because we didn't think it was appropriate to have a dumpster for starters. So that's the approach on that. Um, 
is a quick aside before every member talks. Would they be open to a red cedar fence since the building is red cedar? I would certainly be in support for, for that. I think that would certainly be an appropriate material um, for this location. Um, you know, when you looked at the height at six feet, um, is that, I mean, can you consider dropping that? You know, and if, if you're not covering every inch of what's behind it, at least you're getting most of it, or, you know, a fence to the top or something that sort of brings that down. Uh, Michael, let me uh, interject. I, I mean, this is something that uh, we can discuss with Greg Acera, the, uh, the vendor. Uh, there's a security issue and, and the equipment needs to be covered, but I don't say that we couldn't come down a little bit, but uh, if it's too low, they're going to be, uh, there'll be the opportunity of hopping over the fence and hiding behind it. I think that. Uh, but the bottom line is there was a rationale. What's that? Uh, there was a rationale for that. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think it needs to be secure. And uh, I think that when I say P maybe PVC, uh, there are other, uh, well, you mentioned composite, and I think that if it's a textured uh, material that's uh, that's painted the same gray as the trim, that uh, it's going to be durable and it's going to, uh, you know, I mean, when when you say PVC, you think of, of the shiny PVC. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> This is not that at all. It's like the uh, the uh, the trim on the building and, and all that is painted and looks like wood. And it's a municipal building, let's not forget. Uh, the windows uh, are fiberglass. The uh, you know the uh, Station Street uh, Lincoln Building and the L Street Building have all uh, been painted. I can't think of the name of the material now, uh, but it is a borel. A borel. Borel, yeah. I mean, so uh, a borel fence is something I'd like you to consider, and, and let's let's look at at you know customizing that to lower it as much as we can, but we still have to be concerned with the ease of access for someone over the fence. Catherine. Um, I guess I'd just like to say I, um, I had some, some, some concerns about uh, some kind of lattice work or the topper being some kind of material that's going to get crummy and fragile over time and break and look junky. So in a way, I'm, I have less problem with a taller fence as long as it's well maintained and it's going to stay, you know, crisp and, and clean. That's you know, cedar, cedar does not last forever particularly the the cedar that uh, is new growth and uh, this is the problem with, with the cedar roofs now uh, all the old cedar with the natural oils is, and insect resistance has, has been uh, exploited it's gone uh, so you know I'd be concerned with with how it held up I think that uh, that it's important to have a maintainable monolithic color to it and if it starts to look like a you know a stockade fence in someone's backyard uh, granted that's not always cedar but uh, it's going to be hard to maintain and I don't think uh, it's going to be as uh, crisp and, and kind of architecturally uh, appropriate as something that can be painted and maintained. But let's, let's are there, look at morale. Are there plants for um, kind of plantings in the back too with that saw and things to make it more, um, or is it pavement right up to the fence? Concrete. Concrete. Yeah. Kind of difficult. A good idea, but I mean, in, in, to almost to Carol's earlier point, you have to do concrete wider so when you take the barrels out, you still are on kind of a concrete pad so you can walk the barrels out to the, the parking lot. Um, I think the other thing to reinforce Sevy's point, if you look at the railing system we have on this building, 
there are PVC products. Uh, it is a high, high-end PVC railing system. And with a wood cap. Yeah, with a wood cap. It, yeah, yeah, with a wood cap. And I, I don't think it looks at all like it's there's any part of it that's PVC. And trust me, the expense was uh, more than something that wouldn't have been PVC. You know. And I think we, in, in to, to that point, that was a nice product, and, and we reviewed that product and looked at right. samples. And, and so I think at that level of detail, I think we'd want to consider the same for the fence. And, and if we're going to consider um, some type of composite, I think we know what Borel is, but if there's something else, I think um, you know, having a sample of what that is would be good to understand because I think, like you say, there's varying degrees of what you can buy on the market and you want to make sure that if it is a composite that um, uh, it's something of a, a, as high a quality as uh, what they really represent. Right. In fairness, I know my objection is to the PVC idea, the vision I have in my mind, which might not be correct. Shininess. Right? No, it's not shiny. Good. Uh, Sebi, I just wanted to touch on that briefly. I know that you're painting it, and I'm assuming this is not a factory finish. It will be painted because you want to match what's already right. uh, the colors that are already there. So, PVC to to this group generally means a shiny um, factory form finish. And if you're gonna, I'm assuming your sheen is is certainly not going to be shiny. It'll be, it'll be a matte. No, no, it's matte. The same same as the uh, the trim in the building. Which is all a matte paintable uh, finish. It'll look like wood. And well, then I'll, I guess then to to Mike's point, because and and to Justin's point, because we don't have something in hand, we associate PVC fencing with a, a fairly thin material. Um, it 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 uh, suffers in the sun if if it absorbs too much sun, and over time, you know, it can it can look a bit janky, for lack of a better word. Why don't we get, I, I agree that uh, we should get a sample. Of, I'm sure it's out there and that we can come to an agreement on it. But I really don't think it should be wood. And then if there's anything you can do with the height, I would agree with, with Mike. Yeah. Because, you know, that's a fairly, that's a nice facade. It is prominent. And just getting it lower than those windows. Right, just the uh, window sill height. It is lower, but uh, we'll be sure it doesn't go over the sill height. And I understand this. This is not a realistic view of the building. We're elevated. We're up on Route Three or on the I'm sorry, Three A or on the sidewalk. So um, you know, we do have to be. Uh, we wouldn't see this elevation unless we're down standing in front of the fence. Right. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, may I ask? Um, <clears throat> Debbie, is it possible, I don't know what, whether this is going to hold anything up to not have this fence now. Um, it would be great if we could see a painted portion um, and then prior to the next meeting. Alan? Yeah, the only, uh, that's a good comment here is what I was going to pick up on. Um, the vendor, Greg Acera, has worked feverishly in the last two and a half months to get his side of the building finished. We really had finished the other part a while ago. And the building inspector, Mike Clancy, is going out tomorrow morning. And we, when it, he's not expecting to see a fence, so I want to get that out first. But um, we paved the area in front. The handicapped space is being painted tomorrow. The hope is that we will get a temporary CO so he can be open for a month. You know, the idea being that he can, you know, he spent a lot of money doing it. We've, we've wanted to have victory of some sort. This has been, a, as Harold the most can probably attest, this has been a long process. I it's think been, it was 12 when we started. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been rewarding, but slowly rewarding. Uh, and I think if there's any way the commission, when they come up with something, could either have Sevi give you a product that the chair and, I, I don't know if you had, or you can say that, that Andrea, you could concur that we, we will bring something to the commission that's satisfactory. Um, he can obviously operate with the trash barrels there. None of us like that look. Um, mm -hmm. And stands, there's a lead time or whatever product he buys anyway. 
Um, so there's a couple. Is, of is the there. fence needed for the CO? I don't believe. I don't think it's a code issue at all. Uh, but I think if the commission were to take a, a vote saying, "Look, we're working with the trustees and SEVI to come up with an acceptable material and convey that to Andrea," so when Andrea is supposed to give her comments to the building department, you can say, "Mr. Clancy, we're working on it." You know, and, and we all want to get the right material. But there's a number of things I think. You know, those are not, a lot of your issues are not Mike Clancy's issues because they're aesthetic. And we're big on the aesthetic as well. But I, I think as long as the board can vote in a, a commission can vote in a way that gives Andrew enough direction that they're on board with the idea, we just want to make sure we get the right material. Well, I, I think, and I don't know what the rest of the commission thinks. I'm not sure where to be in a position to vote, but I think providing some guidance to Andrea to say that if she does have a conversation building department that I would imagine there's support for a fence here. I'm not hearing any objection right. about the fence. It's just a matter of is it five feet? Is it six feet? Is right. it meter? Is it PVC? So I, I don't want to speak for the commission, so if anybody objects to that. But it's um, not about the, for me, it's not about the concept of the fence. It's my initial objection was really to the form of PVC that I have in mind that might not be right. So I think, you know, I don't, I'm hoping that doesn't hold you up in any discussions with the building um, officials. Um, I don't know, Andrea, when you usually speak to Mike or if you're expecting to speak to him regarding this particular application, but if that is helpful as part of the conversation, um, the fence itself doesn't require a building. So, um, they would not be soliciting an approval, um, from us for, on that basis. Um, so I can talk, I can let Mike know next week when he's in the office next week, I'm in the office next week. I'd be glad to, to talk to him about that. Um. So it's not it's not going to be an issue. I think the only the only thing is uh, to try and uh, I'm just concerned about the time frame for uh, getting the fence up, knowing you know that it's how long it's taken them to get this far. Right. Although even I if just want to be cognizant of that. Yeah, but even if we made a vote for a fence. We still don't know what that fence is going to be, so we kind of have to wait on samples or some other modifications. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which at that point, when we get it and we're all aboard, presumably, then hopefully at that next meeting we can we'll plan off and, and, and move on. Sammy, how long would it take to get a sample and paint it? Uh, it shouldn't take long. Uh, so when is the next meeting? The 15th of October. Oh, that shouldn't be a problem. Because if you could put it, um, if you could place it somewhere near the building, oh. then yeah. everybody would be able to stop by and take a look at it. Okay. Okay. Okay, well... Um, it seems like there's some direction there um, on that one. So unless um, there are any more comments, then um, we can move on to the second application for 95 Old Street. Okay. Okay. So the second application um, is in regard to um, a new sign in exterior lighting. So why don't you walk us through? Uh, what you have here. Okay. Uh, again, I don't have capability of putting it up, but the the uh, ground-mounted sign uh, would be something that would identify the, uh, the bathing beach and the building. Uh, Greg Acera would like to call his uh, 
establishment, the Beach House, which is good food to go. So that's kind of a descriptive. And then we'd want provision to uh, add uh, temporary signs for particular events, such as farmer's market, uh, some event that there might be uh, as things evolve with the community space, what have you. But uh, the sign would be uh, would be five foot six high, uh, two posts, and th the concept is really one that uh, we looked at a lot of uh, of uh, examples of national park signs, and they're remarkably descriptive of uh, mountain peaks and. Uh, forest and, uh, you know, uh, rock outcroppings or whatever is in that park. So it seems that it's a missed opportunity not to do something that's colorful and uh, it says Bathing Beach and Ocean Edge. Uh, so that's that's what the configuration of the, of the uh, element with uh, the Bathing Beach and the uh, and the address, which we need to have, because it's gone from zero to 95 Otis Street in the few years it's taken. There's a lot of confusion, and poor Greg had to have his stationary all changed from zero. But uh, mm. anyhow, it would be rustic but uh, appropriate thing for the, uh, the park that this is going to become. Uh, a good ways there already with the improvements to the, the beach and the walkway uh, really needs to be kind of lively we feel so that's why that sign is proposed it's compliant with the uh, zoning so are the materials all, is that all wood it's all wood yes it's all wood uh, you know we uh, Dave Hassan is, is working on a design, uh, a final graphic with Greg, but it would be a carved wood sign. It would be uh, something that Dave Hassan has done quite a bit of around town. And uh, so it'll be a very high quality component. It should, uh, it should have character, I think, that's specific to what the what the whole facility and the park is. And the posts are round? Yes. Yeah. And are those, the, what is represented as gray, is that painted or is that um, left to weather? No, we wouldn't want to leave it to weather. It's not going to hold up. Uh, so it'd be stained, probably stained. Uh, that's, the sign would be painted. But I think that's a that's something that uh, I would want to work with Dave Hassan specifically because he's he'd be doing the installation and getting the sign permit. Uh, so you know we could submit his design with uh, you know specifics about the material. This is really this is just a a design proposal, but it's not the, a shop drawing. So I think it's the concept, the color, the character that uh, we want you to approve. And Sebi, on, on the map, where does the sign go? Is it as you it's enter it's the, on the, it's on the site. It's on the site plan. Uh, That's a bad eyesight. Where, where is it? Is it down close to the building, or is it where you enter the parking area off the street? It's uh, down to the right. It says it's, it's uh, aligns with the left side of the building as you see it from 3A. There is a. Uh, oh, I see it. I see it. You see that? Mm -hmm. so it, it really uh, it needs to relate to the building. There is a sign for the beach down at the driveway entrance. Yes. But, you know, we wanted to make this also part of the bathing. Will you be able to see it coming in either direction? 
Yeah, oh yeah, it's double faced in it. Oh, cool. Yeah. I think it's very clever looking. Well, thank you. I, you know, <laughs> glad, you, glad you feel that way, Kelly. The wave of the water and the, the dew. Uh, yeah, very clever. Let your hair down. <laughs> well, I think before we get into lighting, because there's a lot of detail to that, um, are there any other comments or thoughts or suggestions about the fence, and then we can sort of talk about the lighting? The sign. In the sign? Uh, no. I do have one little thought, none of my business, but I would, if it were up to me and I had to wave a magic wand, I'd make the 95 Oda Street smaller than Hingham Bathing Beach. I think it's the least relevant information. Um, I just, I would, you know, maybe. Well, not not if you're driving an ambulance, but you probably. Well, yeah, that's the problem. Um, I don't know, it, I just don't think it should be as prominent as Hingham and Bathing Beach, but that's just me. Quick question about the, um, the colors. So, I mean, I have not done too many signs, um, approved too many signs. It just seems that unless you have the actual design, it's hard to approve it because, I mean, this is a proposal for design, but not the right colors or the exact signage. So I wonder if how that how that works. And then um, one other comment. I'm just, I guess, um, is there. Does it make sense to have the sign? I guess it does make sense to have it in front of the building, but I almost feel like you want it right before the turn. Um, so it marks where you're supposed to go to get to where that <laughs> is drawing you to. But I'm just worried it's going to be lost there as a drive by. And that with the, you know, I don't know. Any other thoughts on that? I would put it down by the, the end. You see why you want to mark it, mark the beach house with the signage. Well, there is a sign down at the entrance. There is, it says the beach house? No. no. It says the main beach house. I mean, it's clearly, there's no other way to get to it than going down to the entrance. You know, I think, I think the, uh, well, the vendor wants to identify, I think he'd have a problem with just sign being down by the entrance. It's sort of confuses things. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to identify the building. And then we put, you know, at one time we just had <clears throat> the building identification and then uh, uh, discuss the fact that it really is the trustees of the Bathing Beach and it's one property and uh, so it's really the Hingham Bathing Beach each house is, is a, a component of that. But it all sort of works together. Plus, you know, what I think that uh, being part of a building complex uh, is going to be a kind of composition where it clarifies something there. If it's just one more sign down at the light, I just don't think it's that. Kind of uh, clarity. Alan? Yeah, I just wanted to amplify on uh, Sevy's point. I agree with Carol's point as far as, <clears throat> you know, where you see it from, but realistically, uh, unless you had a sign on both sides of the traffic light, you know, where people are coming from the Boston side towards, you know, Cohasset, say, which we don't want to do, uh, you're better to warn people when they're coming from the south heading north and they see the building. Uh, so I, I think that's kind of what it accomplishes. I think over time, this is going to be an iconic location anyway, and people will understand they turn at the traffic light. Uh, but I think warning them as they see the building and they see the sign really is the best thing to do, because otherwise um, you're going to have to know where it is if you're coming from Boston anyway, uh, because we can't, no matter how close we get it, you're, you're going, let's face it, 35 to 40 miles an hour, despite what the speed limit is there. It may be better to tell somebody before they get to the traffic light coming from the rotary that that's the building. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it's not perfect, but I think that's what it does. 
Great question. Sebi, um, in response to Catherine's concern about the exact colors, um, she's right. We usually do get a, um, something from David that is like a mock-up. Um, how close to these colors are you expecting? I mean, they're in the same color family. Oh, yeah. As these? Okay, so we're not, you're not. No, I, I think that it's a question of doing something that's clearly symbolically beachy and watery. You know, it's that combination, and I think they're a good color combination. But, you know, the specific uh, paint color is something we can specify and submit. There, there are certainly colors that we would not Okay. Well, but well I, you know, I, I don't want to suggest lunatic colors, but I'm, I'm just saying that there are. One can imagine colors that would you know, feel inappropriate. Well, I hope you think these. We don't, don't imagine you pick those, but. <laughs> but but these, these I hope you think would be appropriate. They're they're fun and they're they're uh, they're lively and they're descriptive. But are, are the colors shown here the exact ones that, that are being proposed? Schematically, but they're colored pencil, and uh, right. that would be, you know, an ink, uh, certain Pantone uh, ink color that uh, Dave Hassan's uh, final drawing would show. Well, I, th I think, and we can sort of get into the lighting conversation, but I think if there was a motion, on this tonight, which included the sign, and sort of, we would need to either approve or not approve the design that we have in front of us right. with colors to be submitted at a later date. But any changes, any tweaks, any text, font sizes, big or smaller, then what is shown on the drawing is some revision that we would also need to review, which you know, could come if we're talking about the fence, you know, at the next step, you know, if in fact that that final drawing will be developed between now and in the next meeting. Um, you know, I, I know we want to move you along, but if it's not the final design, then it, it's hard for us to talk. It's a schematic design. Yeah. Mr. Chair, um, I have a question. Sylvia, so, yeah, how, how does this sign match up with the sign that's a little further down that indicates that you're now coming in to the Hingham Bathing Beach? Are those signs sort of similar, or was uh -huh. that not even considered when this the sign was made? No, that that that's a very uh, utilitarian sign. A DPW sign. I'll leave it at that. Okay, makes sense. Works. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us the story. <laughs> but you know, we, we may at some point want to put another beach house sign at the at the entrance. But I think the whole package needs to be related to the building. Mr. Chairman. Yep. At the risk of being ridden out on a rail, um, <laughs> I would like to propose that if there are some members who would be willing to meet um, briefly for these two projects, um, they wouldn't have to wait till our next meeting on the 15th. Um, is, can people support that? Sure. I would be fine with that. Not going anywhere. That's Go great. There, there is some urgency because Greg has waited a long time I know. to get open. And the sign's going to take time to make. Uh, so he's a little frustrated. Uh, and this is this is really stretched out. So I mean, he may have to put up something temporary. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you have some flexibility, that's terrific. Yeah. We could, um, because these will be continued, we could meet as early as next week. Um, if you feel that the sign will be moving along sufficiently the design so that David could give us something 
more specific to look at? Yeah, I think he's been working on it. I, I've, I've had conversations with him about it. He has the sketch, and uh, McGregor, he, he's working on it. And say, same with the fence. If you can, if you can get the material, I wish to be able to put the paint on it. Yeah. Alan, if that would jive with, we're likely to get a temporary certificate of occupancy anyway. You know, uh, realistically, he's probably open for five or six weeks. Unfortunately, the days are getting shorter, and are probably not great for us, uh, an ice cream stand. You know, when it's dark and you're trying to illuminate it, but. I think if the commission is on board with these concepts and working through Andrea and the other board members, I think Andrea can convey that to the building inspector saying, we understand timing and whatever, but they're being respectful and we want to come up with something we all agree on. Realistically, they're probably not going to be any of these in for this season. I mean, if I was to be totally honest with you, I don't think we'll have the fencing in or a sign in during the time he's open, or if we do, it's going to be for a week. So I think he's going to have to get by and word of mouth and everything else, which I think is going to happen. Maybe the plus of the pandemic. I think a lot of people are eager to see this place open and word of mouth should be sufficient. But as long as the commission is looking at it and saying, look, we want to work with you. It's just that we want to understand the materials and colors and things like that. I think that works for all of us. Well, and I think if we, we can certainly insert um, another meeting prior to that October. So I think as soon as we can get you know, that information on the final sign, the sample for the fence, we can, you know, turn around a meeting pretty quickly, I would imagine, particularly when we're doing it remote and we don't have to coordinate um, getting into town hall. So uh, yep. certainly just keep Andrea posted on, on how you... Uh, can we have a... Uh, I don't know how much more we're talking about it, but I was hoping there might be a different color temperature available for the solar bollard light. Yeah, let's why oh, we wait, we're not there yet. <laughs> yep, okay. Just I had a here. question. Yeah. Uh, maybe Mike, we can um just before the next meeting, maybe they can just put a little mock up out at the um at the baby beach at the um, on the building. Just put a little arrow or something. We can all go over there individually, take a look at the sample, and then and then we can get, get comfortable with it and then we can discuss it, you know? Well, we're not having a Saturday. Yeah, this is outside. Uh, you know, we could meet spaced uh, out and uh, take a look. Yeah, and, and Sevy, if you're if you're thinking about a material that's similar to what the railings are, right. you know, and it's going to be exactly the same texture, color as the railings. You, know, you point to a railing, and it, this is what it's going to look like, and then we just figure out the height stuff. You know. Yeah. All right, well, why don't, we, um, why don't we talk lighting? Okay, we're, we're proposing uh, on the building, the A-type lights uh, are uh, uh, a textured gray. Uh, it's only, I mean, that is a, a need to have on the back side of the building for security and to light the... Uh, mechanical and trash areas uh, just to function. So it's only, it, it's a, a dark sky light. It's double gray finish. It's only uh, 14 and a half inches wide. And, uh, right in there, and I see in the cut sheet specifically selecting 3,000 Kelvin for those uh, those yeah. VA type lights, which is which is great. I like the three thousand Kelvin. That's the color, right? Yep. I've I've got actual metal samples, but you'd you'd be very happy with them. They're textured, and uh, there's a nice gray. They'll be pre-finished. They won't be painted, which would be a problem with the metal light fixture. My spec sheet says they're only eight inches wide, Sevy, not fourteen. Are you looking at the bollards or the uh, wall mount? Um, wall mount is the A's. Okay. 
8.22 inches. Yes, although I see where the 14 is coming from. Okay, maybe, uh, yeah, I, uh, well, that's the 14 inches. Yeah. yeah, that must be the carton for that's shipping. The, that's the carton. Uh, yep. So the, the projection is only just over four and three quarters inches off yeah. the building. Yeah, they must come back. Yeah, it's only you know, eight and a quarter inches wide. Yeah, thank you for that. Much better. But that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, very good thing. Yeah, they'll they'll really disappear, yeah. and they're they're necessary. But we don't want anything. Uh, we don't want a feature picture there. It's, it's just a hooded uh, sight light that'll be cut off for dark sky. Now the bollards, uh, J.R. Fry, Fry. Uh, has given me this material. They're solar, solar powered. Uh, I really, we're going to need some site lighting. There's nothing in that parking lot now. And Alan, maybe you can jump in. But they, they're about as uh, as uh, discreet as uh, one can imagine. Uh, I don't have a sample of that, and I wish, I don't know if JR is here. You say he was here earlier. And, and on these, is there another light color option other than the 4,000 Kelvin, 4,000 K color? Something, because the other lights are going to be 3,000 Kelvin, and which is a, a nice you know, sort of soft light, the 4,000 is a little more stark, a little more blue, a little more yeah. electric. Um, and plus, they wouldn't be putting out the same color light if one is 3,000 and one is 4,000. But if the bollards are, could be procured in a 3,000 Kelvin color. Well, I, I just don't know. I mean, this, this is something JR handed me that the DPW wants to do. Yep. Uh, don't know what to say, but I'll... Well, if there's an option, that would... <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I have the colors, the light color match. Right, no, I understand. It makes a lot of sense. A lot of sense. I do know the vendor is quite concerned about the lack of lighting that's there. He probably wouldn't be if this was, like, June... Uh, 17th rather than September 17th. So I, I think it's something we are going to have to look at. But again, I think it's like the other issues I, as to when we do get them or don't get them. There's more than enough time for us to hopefully convene and get you better samples of in every case of these. Um, I think to Sebi's point, I'm not even sure that these solar lights will throw enough light in the parking lot if somebody's going to get an ice cream at quarter of eight this Saturday night. You know, uh, realistically, but I think that's something we're going to have to address down the road with the commission. You know, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think JR is like able to get a fair amount of light. Whether it can be in the amount of lumens he was suggesting, I don't know, but we'll check into that. So, are you? Um, it's the color, the Kelvin's of the the uh, color, color of the light. Yeah. So, are you suggesting if it's not so? Is your proposal? install them as they are based on this proposal and then add to them later if you want or are you still considering whether you would install them based on what you have here uh, again this is what the uh, the DPW is proposing I mean I think they they work around the parking the drop off and the entrance to the building uh, so I don't think that the intent is to add more lighting, uh, even if it to some may be a good idea in the rest of the park and a lot. I mean, it's pretty dark down there. Yeah, I was more suggesting we may have some other lights, not solar ball alerts. I don't think we'd increase the number of solar ball alerts. It's whether do we need lighting in the parking lot. Additional lighting. Additional lighting. It, 
it's never been an issue, obviously. I mean, typically the bathing beach was used three or four hours on either side of high tide during you know, peak beaching time. We've entered a, a new dynamic with suddenly something that happens at night there. Yeah. And we are looking to do more things in the future, maybe having band concerts at the gazebo, things like that. And lighting could be an issue there if you suddenly start looking at evening functions. But yep. that's something for next year that we'll have to figure out. That's right. I mean, there is a there is a code thing where you're supposed to have what three foot candles in the parking yeah. lot. So yeah, that's down the road. It's, it's an issue. Yeah, it is. So um, I'm not sure what the, how the commission feels about the, the lighting. I know um, you know I agree with Justin's uh, concern about uh, three thousand k versus four thousand. If there would be a motion, maybe that could be, um, you know, made as part of it. But would it be helpful for you to get an approval, at least a partial approval on this application for the lighting, um, and then the signage sort of comes, you know, in a week or two or whenever we're able to do that, or, you know, it's not really going to buy you much time between now and the next week or two when we look at, you know, the final signage and fence. Because I wonder if, you know, kind of thinking out loud as I'm thinking is that, you know, this may give the opportunity to find out whether that bollard is available in 3000 K, wow. um, you know, which if it isn't, you know, maybe it, maybe it becomes a different uh, fixture altogether. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to get back to JR and that. I'd like to have you approve the building mounted lights because they'd be done by the electrician. Uh, and they're part of the infrastructure of the building. The other lights are are, uh, are not. And, and Andrea, procedural, we could make a motion for a partial approval without rejecting the remainder. The remainder remains open as a normal application, right? Okay. But you type A. Right. Sorry, Andrew, you're on mute. What, you can't read lips? <laughs> <laughs> no more taxes. No more taxes, our cheeks. <laughs> oh, God. So, um, you're dating yeah, yourself, you Sammy. I know, that was a blast from the past. Exactly. <laughs> we can just, um, yeah, we can just make a motion uh, indicating that it is, uh, um, you know, it's a two-part, uh, actually three-part um, proposal, the bollards, sign, and the light, and that we're just approving the building-mounted light. I, 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 have one, I have one question, and I was out, and I apologize for that. Um, I'm home alone, and the dogs were asking me to take them out. So, um, it, when I look at this, it also looks like you're, you're supposed to have some C fixtures, right, for the sign. Uh, yeah, there's a sign light, and, and, and I don't have those fixtures in the package. I, know. I don't know if anybody else does. Uh, Dave Hassan will take care of that. So let's try to get that uh, when we get his design. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Well, then I'd like to make a motion. Justin, go ahead. I'd, I'd like to make a motion for a uh, partial or a significant certificate of appropriateness for 95 Otis Street to uh, implement a portion of the application uh, that is has got a description proposed ground mounted sign and additional exterior lighting and my motion is to approve the proposed light fixtures indicated by uh, the marking A on the cut sheet in the package and as indicated in the positions on the, the site plan, uh, and I suppose we can pick out 
Seven, what date is this plan? This is for Pyramid. Seven, eight, twenty. Seven, eight, twenty. Eight, twenty. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, Catherine, how do you vote? Daryl, how do you vote? Aye. Hans, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Justin, how do you vote? Aye. And that's an aye uh, for me as well. Um, so we'll look forward to seeing um, more on the lighting, the sign, and um, the fence. Good. Great, thanks. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so. Um, Sevi, I think you're up next again on Sixth uh, Station Street. Sixth Station Street. Um, regarding signage and now, now the owner is uh, handling the uh, permitting for the sign. The signs that are proposed uh, are compliant uh, with zoning, so it. You know, and, and I'm really not involved other than to show you that she would propose a, a yellow sign, which is actually similar to what she has uh, at her existing location. But the, uh, the big thing is the uh, awning color and pattern. And I think you all now have torn apart that nice sample that I got from you and distributed it so that everybody has a little piece. I hope it's big enough to, to tell from. Uh, but uh, the owner had had looked at uh, preferences she would have for it. And, you know, when, when I uh, uh, broached a... Uh, another uh, color and scheme, but also <clears throat> striped uh, a month or so ago. Uh, it was without knowing who the owner was and just feeling that the reddish goes well with the, uh, with the green, as you can see from the sidewalk. But uh, what I like about, I, I think it's essential to have a stripe. And if you look around town, you'll see that the solid colors, and I've had experience, of, and Rob, Rob knows that uh, Wellspring, we have solid colors, but they're very bright, uh, red, blue, and yellow, but they do tend to show everything if it's a solid color, and if you look at, at the stripe, which is a very traditional pattern, for good reason, of this kind of mill building period, and you look at Square Cafe, you know, those are really crisp, uh, good-looking uh, awnings. And uh, what I like about this particular pattern is that the building is the, is that color is, is the dark uh, dominant color. And, and I think that, uh, and hopefully you all feel that the Jackson Antique uh, white uh, off-white works well with that uh, as opposed to a stark white but what's nice about this fabric is that it picks up on on that Jackson antique and is sort of a, a nice in-between uh, range it has warmth it's got a lot of warmth to it uh, more so than the Jackson antique but I think the relationship of all these all these colors it works quite well, and we've got a fair amount of awning, so that, uh, I don't feel they should be uh, dark. It shouldn't be dark blue. It shouldn't be black, uh, but they should be something that picks up on the on the color combination. And I think this is a very successful combination. Uh, um, just a couple of questions I have. So. Um, is the stripe perpendicular to the building or yeah. parallel to the building? I should have turned it 
No, it's it's perpendicular. That's what I thought, but then I saw your photo. And yeah, I know. I know. All right. Details. Yeah. Um, and then, um, so the sign again, sort of to. to on the bathing beach, um, is, is the, the sign is part of the application. And I don't have any sign, I, I don't see any uh, drawings or pictures of the sign. Maybe I'll go online. The, on the second sheet. Oh, I, I gave some dimensions. You have a picture. You have a picture of the sign. You have a picture of the sign. It's very, it's very discreet. Oh, look at that, Sherry. Thank you. Although that looks, well. It's a little bleached out. So. Oh, is that the sign, of the, the, the cloth? Yes, that's the sign. That's the name of the establishment. Right, but that's the sign is going to look. Exactly like that. Exactly. Which is what she has on the present location. They're all two feet by two feet, so they're very discreet. Uh, two would be perpendicular. Front and back of the building, and uh, one parallel. <coughs> Maybe more than North Street. And so those are painted. It's not engraved. It's just flat painted. On. Right. Okay. And <coughs> just as we did with 38 North Street sign. Oh, am I muted still? No. Nope. Uh -oh. oh. <coughs> okay. With 38 North. Street, we required them to put uh, wood signs on North Street side and then the um, MDO board on Station Street. So, are there any questions or comments from the Commission on the or the yeah. I have a question, Michael and Andrea. Um, you know, I, I was not on the commission when this building was approved, so I don't know if awnings were part of that submission or as or signage was part of that submission. But I'm not seeing. You know, I kind of agree with Justin. I'm not seeing. I don't know how big these awnings are. I don't know how. You know, I'm told that the sign is two by two. I'm looking at plus existing location. I see their little square. It looks like a two by two square wood sign hanging off the building. I just, I feel like I don't have enough to understand what we're looking at. We're asked to, we're asked to put a lot of pieces together. I, you know, with all due respect, Sevi, I don't see uh, dimension of these owners. Well. Okay, they're, they are in the original elevations. So that's what, that's what I'm asking uh, Michael and Andrea. If the awnings were part of the original uh, submission with the building in general, I wouldn't have an issue. But I have no problem with the fabric. You know, I wouldn't ask the company to change their, their logo or their, their color or anything like that necessarily. Um, I just, from this application, this two-page application, I don't get a good understanding of what these things look like. Andrew, do you recall if the awnings were part of that original? Because I remember them being in some of the rendering, but I don't remember if we approved awnings and then we were just waiting for a specific material or they were not approved as part of that package. I don't believe they were approved as part of that package. So you do you recall? They, they were always in the rendering, but they were not part of the... Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's a good point. Um, 
Tracy, and I think there are several members on this commission who were not on the commission when this was originally, when the building was originally uh, presented and, and approved. So, um, I mean, I personally can visualize it um, because I'm very familiar and went through that process, but I know there are a lot of people who have not. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, I think we need to see some drawings or resubmittal of those drawings with the awnings on them as part of this. So um, folks on the commission can see the context because it is a separate application, although many of us have been looking at this for, um, you know, for some time now. And I think um, actual dimension drawings of the sign with the locations indicated as to where they're going to be on the building, sort of like what you did with the, the lighting, um, is that it's just a sketch marked up showing exactly where the signs are. I think um, I think would be uh, necessary to get the full picture of what this application is. I hear you. So, uh, timing-wise. What do you think? That has to be, uh, I mean, is, is that something we could not wait till October 15th? To, to I think it happens all the time. It looks like they're they're close to open. They are. They, yeah. I think today is the day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm on the phone. I'm, I'm, I'm on the phone. I'm just talking up from clock. Hi, so I just, I, hi. Hi. hi, everyone. Um, it's my first, my first. Um, call like this, so um, um, it's fascinating. Um, I have a I have a question. So you know, like my my goal is compliance. So like if if I can have specific direction on, you know, I thought when I submitted my my application for the signs in particular, my goal was to submit it like to your liking. I'm flexible as long as it's what you want. Um, so. You know, tell me what to do and I'll do it. And I think you know everything in terms of the signs were to code. So I hope that's okay. And then you know, listening to this conversation regarding the the awnings, you know, if, if um, you know, it was my impression that the awnings are always part of the original drawings and approvals and all that kind of stuff. So I thought that this was kind of like a a kind of protocol conversation just. Um, to approve basically the colorway on the awning um, because you know all those boxes had been checked along the way. If that's not the case, obviously um, um, we need to figure that out. But um, you know, my other question about the awnings is, you know, what what is your preference? Do you prefer no awnings? Do you prefer awnings? Do you prefer a certain dimension? You know, because, you know, I think everyone's goal is to be on the same page. So, like, rather than kind of submit another application and the, the dimensions being off or the look or, you know, whatever, you know, I think it's in everyone's best interest to just say, you know, let's agree on what we want. And then, so, so the next conversation is quick. Right, and I, and I think to your point, I think we can make the next conversation quick with the context and information in front of us. I think it's hard to, you know, make a judgment as to what it should be without a drawing indicating what it, you know, what the plan is. But I think. Um, well, so are you are you are you speaking specifically to the awnings when you say that? Yeah. So the awnings and okay. so typically with. Um, and I, and I think, you know, Sevy's got the drawings. I think, um, yeah. you know, they were part of early discussions regarding the building when we did it. But like I said, um, right. there's a lot of different commission members who aren't familiar with it. So I think, um, you know, I would, um, you know, propose. It's not a good idea to just sort of make a trust that we're all recollecting the same thing without a drawing. Right. And I think proposing what? You want, which from what I recall is an awning at all of the first floor storefront windows. Right. Um, 
but part of the discussion is, you know, some of those are big windows. Is the awning, you know, one long awning? Is it split up? You know, how, you know, constructability, you know, I'm just throwing numbers out there. If it's a 20 foot long window bay, is the awning going to be 20 feet long or is it going to be split in sections of 10 based on how the building? I don't know. So those are sort of some of the details that we're looking at. But I know SEVI, um, you know, has that information and can likely turn that around fairly quickly that we can then right. um, review. I think in terms of the size, um, mm -hmm. typically we'll review uh, an actual dimension drawing um, that shows the sign on the drawing with dimensions. And if there are multiple signs, there would be sort of a floor plan could be a simple markup, mm -hmm. goes a few dots on yeah, the says, here's where we want them to be. Um, mm -hmm. So that we can understand that you're requesting, I think it's four sides, um, but not knowing exactly where on stage. Right, but I submitted that as part of my application. Like, it's literally, with, with I, I don't know what you're, I'm sorry, I called in, so I'm, I don't have a visual on what we're doing. But I mean, in terms of the signs, I can tell you I submitted it specifically, um, you know, where they're going to go and what they're going to look like and all that kind of stuff. I can resubmit it. And the signs are, you know, I guess my, my yeah, I think, you know, we can move past the signs pretty quickly because I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Um, you know, I think that if you guys have specific things in mind or concerns regarding the awnings, like, but, you know, I would prefer to hear that before, ahead of time. I mean, you give, are you opposed to awnings? Do you like awnings? I mean, what is, is there is there a thing about awnings so that we know that ahead of time? Or is it just that you want the specific drawings? I think we'd, we'd need the specific drawings to see what's being proposed. I don't think, and I'm, I'm speaking for myself, not the entire commission, but, you know, awnings on retail buildings in um, this area is pretty typical. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a matter of what it looks like, how many there are, where they're located, you know, how far mm -hmm. off the building are they, you know, how far mm -hmm. in do they extend, um, those types of things. So that's fairly standard. Right. I don't think we have a generic objection to awnings. That's uh, what we're fearing. Yeah. I mean, I don't have a generic desire for awnings either. I mean, I just got, that's why I'm trying to figure out like what, you know, what are we fighting for one way or the other? You know, it's, it's, you know, I think we, but I guess that was my whole point earlier of, you know, I think the goal is compliance. So what do we do to just kind of check this meeting out the box and, you know, be done. So. I mean, well, you know, I, I appreciate the, you know, want to move this forward and, and we're right there with you um, mm -hmm. but we need more information to be able to render a quick decision um, mm -hmm. and that's really what we're requesting I'm not hearing any objections to no 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 not at all I just I guess I was more curious if you would prefer you know if you if you have preferences you just want more detail more detail right gotcha Hans you had a question Uh, yeah, Mike. Um, just just to um, just to put you at ease a little bit, the package that we approved um, for Six Station Street, um, if I recall, there was a um, there was a sketch that Sevy did, which was a lead page mm -hmm. for that portfolio, <clears throat> and the building was in green, and I think the um, the awnings were in blue, and there wasn't like um, there wasn't a whole lot of detail in terms of the the size of the awnings, but. What Savvy was proposing um, looked very appropriate for that building. So I think if you um, if you can just get us some of those dimensions, um, this is a new fabric um, that you're that you're um, submitting here. But you know, I, I, it's a little bit different than the blue. But again, I think this is um, it, it, it's going to be appropriate for the building. It's just just if you can get us some dimensions and a little bit more detail on that, I think you can get the other members of the commission that weren't involved. In, in that decision um, last year and the year before um, up to speed. I think that would be really helpful. And, and Katya, this is Sevi. I can uh, 
If you tell me exactly where you want those signs, I'll put them on the elevation along with the Great. with the. I'm not particular level. about where they go. I, you know, I, I just, you know, I just want it to be to code. So, and and I was kind of, for me, I'm such a visual person as opposed to like you. You're such a, you know, professional. You get these the drawings and the elevations and what's going to be appropriate in terms of where it goes. So good. for me, I, I was thinking, okay, well, the awnings go up and then the sign will look good here next to the sign, next to the awning or whatever. And so it was more about where we were going to be relative to the awning. So, and I don't know what it is in terms of feet or distance to the ground or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, well, we'll take a look because I know you want some perpendicular and some parallel, uh, mm -hmm. and you know we have to see how it all looks together. And, yeah. You know, well, we can't, we can't I promise we'll do it well. <laughs> What's that? I said I promise we'll do it well. <laughs> oh yeah. So far, so good. Yeah. yeah. Ben, you had a comment. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, Andrea, I know online we can look at applications, the current applications. Can we also see applications that have been approved? I, I have the date that it got approved. It was uh, September 27th of 2018. You're on mute. There you yeah. go. Actually, I don't think um, we don't have those plans online, um, but we do have the minutes of the decision, so. Do you want oh, me to sorry. put those up? I did find the minutes. Do you want oh, me good. to put them on sure. the screen? Sure, well, we want okay. us the picture, don't we? Well, but. We well, have the motion um, of the details. So it was later, it was um, March of uh, 2019 with the, when they came back for the details. So I could put that up if you want me to do that. Does that address? It, um, has, it does say, it mentions the awnings. So all right, good, yeah, let's see it. Can you see that on this side where it says motion? Yeah, it's um. Some of it's getting cut off. Some of it's getting cut off on the side. There we go. Perfect. Will be canvas with color to be determined. So it looks like, you know, we did yeah. awnings as part of that motion. Part of that motion. Part of that motion. Part of that motion. We, we apparently like them. Well, well, we're also a public safety uh, issue, but well, I think it's probably. Yes, Michael. Well, then, you know, it, it looks like then we're, we're down to... Um, the color, I, I will say, you know, a, a drawing is always helpful to go with this, but you know, it looks like we've approved it, approved the awnings based on that motion. So, um, you know, it, it looks like it comes down to the fabric and the color. Um, I think the signage is still something that's undefined because we don't know where they're going and how they relate to what you just described. So, um, you know, I don't know if the commission is, you know, um, on board, feels it appropriate to, um, it, it but doesn't feel unreasonable to ask for a drawing showing the signs and, and I think the group might well view with that, that we would expect the awnings that we approved would not be objectionable now. Good. So, I guess I would, you know, turn the conversation back to sort of the, the, the fabric of the awning 
understand its appropriateness. Um, but I would, you know, still, um, you know, that doesn't change the, the request in terms of the signage and the location and the walls for that. So, you know, if this was another, you know, partial motion, um, if we were to get there, you know, maybe it's the, the awnings if the commission feels comfortable with those and the, and the sign is, comes, you know, it follows. Hey, um, I can start my video, but um, hey, it's me. Hi. <laughs> um, I decided to go in online versus on the phone. Um, I when I submitted my sign application, I marked where they would all go and the dimensions. Is that not something you all have? Uh, who who submit that to, Kajit? Um, in permit, whatever. I mean. On the, on the we, we never saw that. You didn't submit it to the ACC, I don't think, because that's the whole. That's it, what. That's what I had. To oh, so when I, okay, well, so that's me being inexperienced. Well, uh, why don't you send me what you sent. Uh, to, I think you sent it to the zoning board for a sign permit. Exactly. That's but what not I did. to the HCC. So. Okay, I did, I'm sorry that I didn't know that I. Was so just get me there. that, and uh, I'll incorporate it. Okay, thank you. Yep. So then, um, regarding the awning um, fabric, are there any thoughts or concerns about the awning fabric? Questions, comments? Catherine? I think um, the fabric is subtle and subdued. It looks great with bright yellow. I, I think it looks really beautiful with the color of the, the green paint on the wall, so I think it's a great choice. I agree. Ben? Um, those with much better color sense have made this decision, and I think it's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Ben's colors. I agree. Uh, okay. Um, well, if there's, if there aren't any other comments, does anybody want to make a motion um, regarding uh, this application? So, Mr. Chairman, we're um, we're approving the the, um, the fabric That's for ready. the awning. Yes. And yes. then we'll revisit the sign. Right. And, and I I can make the motion. Uh, okay. For that. Um, so I'd like to make a motion for Six Station Street um, for the awning fabric. Um, submitted as part of the application uh, with samples um, and photographs attached. Um, signage um, is not approved at this time. We're waiting on additional information about um, specific um, locations. Uh, we, how long, like, to for? Do we have to have another meeting like this? Like, what's the process in terms of signage? Well, we have, um, we typically it's, um, you know, we have one meeting a month, but we looking to um, have another meeting before our, the meeting um, for another application that, um, you know, if this information, which SEVI is um, involved in, so if this information is already exists and can get submitted, we can. Um, probably wrap this up pretty quickly at the next meeting, which will be within the next um, week or two. It hasn't been determined yet, but we can put that on the agenda for this interim meeting. Great, thank you. Uh, I, my apologies, I had no idea I had two steps to follow. Welcome to <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> next time. Is there a second on the motion? I'll second that. That's a second. Um, Catherine, how do you vote? Aye. Hans, how do you vote? Aye. Justin, how do you vote? Aye. Carol, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, that's an aye for me as well. So thank you. Thank you for your patience. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll hope for a quick turnaround.
um, at the interim meeting and signing the report. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Um, the last hearing, uh, last application is uh, 51 Pleasant Street um, for um, renovations and an addition to the existing um, building. Um, why don't you have an applicant on if you want to walk us through that? Hi, this is um, William and Molly Margaret Sellers. Uh, nice to meet y'all. Um, do you want to kick us off? Um, so, do you want me to give you an overview of what we're planning? Um, yeah. The staples plans that I've uh, submitted to the Historical Commission. Yep, yep. So, we do have that. We have the application. We have all the drawings here. But sort of why don't you kind of walk us through, kind of talk us through what it is that you're doing, and you know, we'll sort of see as we go through. Mr. Chairman, let me just say that we also received, uh, and I think I, I sent it out earlier today, um, a letter of support from your neighbors. Um, so I will I'll pull that up and read that um, right. read that in once we get going. So give me a second to pull that up. But why don't you guys go and uh, that is from the coolers. Yeah. Yeah, Ed in the shop. Uh, thank you, Andrea. Um, so we would like to, um, uh, starting with the first page of the architecture plan, we would like to restore a part of what was once an existing porch on this house. Um, there's no door on Pleasant Street. The door is on Union Street. And so therefore we would restore the porch that was on Union Street. They had a more elaborate porch scenario, but we were going to keep it a bit more conservative and more in the theme of the other houses in the area. Um, uh, I think I might go on because the back of the house will be explained at a better time than other. Um, the next, the next, uh, before the next page, which shows you the existing house as it stands today. But so we'll move on from there unless anyone has any questions. Go ahead, keep going. Okay, I'm on sheet, sheet two. Um, if you start on the Pleasant Street side of the house, uh, the existing living room would stay the same. The house has an entry stairwell where the front door is, so that's where we were hoping to build a more substantial porch than exists today. What exists today can't stay there. It's not um, stable enough to stay in place. So we were going to extend that and make that the substantial entrance. Behind that is the dining room. The only major change in this zone would be um, to redo the bathroom because there's issues with the floor and to uh, cut what is a large china pantry in half and have a um, gas fireplace in a smaller china pantry because no one has enough china to fill that pantry. If, if, if <laughs> question, how much of the inside of the oh, yeah. house detail are you interested versus the outside? Is it all or windows, it's like where, where do you would where would you like us to focus? Yeah, so our our purview is um, exterior and what you can see from a positive way. Okay. Uh, which would also include sort of window relocations and things like that. Now, anything we see from the outside from a public way. Okay, then before I move on, uh, there is a window that would be inside of that porch area that we would get rid of. That would be important to you guys. Um, there isn't a match on the other side, and it just seemed to look awkward. Um, in front of what is the kitchen, there is a proposed window well that would be considered the basement egress. Uh -huh. um, if we're if I'm walking you down Union Street, you what will be a small addition on the back. The only part of the house that we that isn't part of the footprint would include a deck off the kitchen uh, to, to balance
steps off the house uh, in front of the only addition room, which would be a back hall entrance, a staircase down to the basement, and a small office space. Essentially, the kitchen deck is an access point off the back side of the house, uh, and that would be visible partially from Union. Are you interested in what would be visible to the Cooley's house on the other side? Yeah, I think it, it's more from a public way. And I think you, you know, having gone by this house and, and knowing it, I think you're, I mean, you can see almost every side of your house from a public way. And, you know, a little less on the Cooley side, but obviously around Union, it doesn't. It makes very modification. Yeah, that's actually a very good point. From the Cooley side, our driveway is very narrow. Uh, enough just to fit our car. I could see where there's a bump out window if you can see uh, a bay that runs really from first floor to second floor of the dining room picture. Uh, and then I, there's a little bit of a partial view to the corner that is the uh, the family room. So that that's the only piece that you could see from the street. Okay. Um, and what exists today at that family room is a, you could call it a Two season room, it's not a three season. It's a glassed in porch sunroom. I would call it a sunroom. It's all glass. Um, Cement floor. Yeah, it's more of a concrete, uh, not concrete, it's a um, cinder block type of base unit uh, with windows that slide up and down, but it's all <laughs> it's all glass. You really couldn't, we've got about two or three weeks left before we can't use it anymore. We, could, we do have some color photos here so we can see. Okay. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. So then if um, I've told you enough about this one, we'll move on. Yep. Okay. Uh, the second floor, in terms of vis what you would see on uh, Union or Pleasant, actually will change very little other than that bump out that would include the mudroom. Um, and it will not have, it, it will have, um, you know, a triangle above it, but it won't have a second floor to it. On the, that sunroom side, do I include that? There, we're hoping to, to extend that room to be a second floor to use for our bathroom on, uh, on the second floor. But that's, again, on the Cooley side. Um, I'm going to move on unless you need more information there. Um, on the third floor, we had an, uh, we have not decided to do any kind of dormer. We were hoping to use the third floor space for a staircase, a bedroom, some storage, and a bathroom. We, we, we wouldn't change the roof yeah, line. Yeah, we didn't, we decided not to change any type of dormer or what you call a storm, or I forgot the name of it. We tried to keep the existing shape of the roof of the house. Uh, nothing really changes except for the front attic window, uh, which would be whatever is code specific. Uh, Pleasant Street window. And so that was sheet seven is what you're mentioning uh, just there. Okay, actually, cor you're correct. I am. Uh, I was still walking through the interior. Yeah, I think sheet seven is is, is a lot of what you want to say. You're correct. Um, yeah, so sheet seven shows you the attic window we we'd hope to enlarge. Um, it shows you the so the first image shows you this the B window shows you the size of the bump out. Um, everything else other than the window E doesn't match anything else, so we were hoping to find a window that would go ahead and match the other existing windows. And, and what's important here is that we're looking to replace, uh, well, put in the new windows that mimic almost exactly the other style, the what I call two over one, um, so that they all aren't matched together, obviously. Um, so yeah, and I think E was that call out that Molly was just speaking to. I think the, the attic window, uh, we'd love your input on that. We'd like it to match the other windows um, as long as it's code uh, specific. 
Do you have any questions about what's what we've done around the front door? We don't have an opportunity to put lights, um, windows next to the front door, so we put some above. I think that's it. That's all. Um, other than a chimney, um, which is in the back of the house, where it says new chimney on the uh, on the left hand side. It, it looks like two new chimneys. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, the front and the back. The existing chimney is uh, is also there. My my fault. And then in sheet eight, I guess it doesn't. Sheet eight isn't necessarily maybe interesting to the historic commission. It faces the backyard side yard so I think um, the question in terms of materials on the exterior it sounds like based on the application you're looking to replace the existing vinyl siding with cedar um, we are we are we're, we're looking we we can't yet sorry to say yet afford to do the entire siding all the way around but the new existing we would match to th that style and size of uh, the cedar well that would certainly be an improvement thank okay. you for saying that <laughs> that wants to come over and help please <laughs> please we i have we no idea wait for that. we have no idea who actually approved that <laughs> that <laughs> so. one through the crack yeah Hi there. Uh, go ahead. Hey, uh, uh, Andrea, do we have a Form B on this house? Uh, I did not send one out, um, but it is a, uh, it's a Queen Anne built in, I think, 1890. 92. 92. Do, um, do we know if this ever had a, uh, a gable entrance on, on Pleasant? I don't have that information. I think that's an interesting question, Hans, because as you go down Pleasant Street to the right of this house, if you're facing the house, the, there are very similar homes, a little bit different sizes, but they all enter from Pleasant Street. Mm -hmm. This house has a Pleasant Street address, but its entrance is on Union. And I'm, boy, when I see this house, my first thought was, Somebody took the front door off at some point, so they'd have a nice big living room I, I to be on the side. Do I we know where the left right path? Door. I think you're right. I just know um, this must have had a this must have had an unpleasant one. Yeah, uh, probably a porch. You yeah. did stand, and when you entered, you were standing in the middle of the living room, which isn't always a wonderful thing. So I think somebody turned it. Yeah, and I I, I gotta believe that entrance that was probably put in pre permission. Yeah. Pretty distinct front hall, though, in, inside the house. On the side, on yeah. the Union Street side. Inter in the interior, it is a pretty distinct entryway. It's hard to know. 19 1892. It's hard to know what this really originally looked like. Interior <laughs> changes were made to all these houses. They took fireplaces out and put them back in, and added all kinds of stuff. I'm just. I didn't know when I went by today, I didn't notice. Will you have to cut an entrance in off of Union Street so that a, your car can come in and, and go to the front door? I didn't notice any opening in the fencing. The, no, there, yeah. there isn't one today. That would certainly be nice at some point, if possible. It's Maybe. not. It's not curved, if yeah. that's a, if that's the proper term. You have to apply uh, for that. Yeah, it would be really nice to have like almost a circular no. at some point, which would be, you know, just another nice access point because that's where the door is from the. From the, all the searching that I had done and looking up at the history of the house, um, I didn't find any anything that showed a front door on Pleasant. And to Molly's point, the living room setup, I, I can't imagine there could be a door in the way that the framing is 
there's even a beam that runs down the middle between the two front oh. one, one, two, three, the, right between the windows. Imagine there was a door. It would have been off center and it would not have been centered in that room. Would have been the door on one side and the two windows across. Yeah, it would have been. What if Nickers has that? Kind of like it is now, if you go back to that, if you will look in your packages at the picture of our house now, that little tiny bathroom window and then spindly porch, we just want to beef it up a little bit and, and, and give it some, you know, make it a nicer entrance because it's so, uh, what was it, disproportionate to the side of the house as it is today. Yeah, oh, I think it's a wonderful plan. I'm going to really enjoy it. Just, just before I sort of we sort of deep in, dig deeper into some um, comments and thoughts about it, I, I do want to read um, in the letter of support for the coolies before uh, I forget here. So um, uh, this is addressed uh, to the Hingamistville District Commission uh, regarding the application of Bill and Melanie Sellers, 51 Pleasant Street. Uh, dear Sir, Madam, thank you for the notice we received regarding the pending application of Bill and Molly Sellers for a certificate of appropriateness for a proposed addition and ancillary work to their home at 51 Pleasant Street. We have reviewed the application, the plans on the line at the link provided in the notice, and would like to express our support for this project. As you may recall, we have been before the commission on several occasions regarding proposed work to our home at 49 Pleasant Street. While we don't profess to have the experience and expertise of the commission, we do believe that the plans for this project reflect modifications that are compatible with the physical character of this older building and its setting in the historic district. Although we have only recently met the sellers, we have been impressed with their commitment to improving their property and, by extension, the neighborhood. As abutting neighbors, as abutting neighbors, we support this project without reservation. Very truly yours, Edward and Michelle Cooley. That's nice. So um, with that, um, uh, I don't know if there was any more um, to the application that you wanted to walk us through before we sort of get into some discussion in more detail about what we're seeing here. Um, if there is, please do. All, you know, the intent is that this is an open dialogue, so I think we'll sort of get into some commentary and, you know, we want to make sure that uh, we're working together uh, going through this. So. Um, I think I think with that, I'd probably open it up to the commission um, and to continue the conversation regarding um, what we're seeing here. Sure. And, and one other point is uh, we tried to keep it as simple as possible and, and try to keep the original window style almost to to the exact footprint because eventually we'd like to replace all the windows with the same window type that is existing today, but obviously newer. And of course, the siding we would like to tackle very soon. Uh, at some point, we just can't feasibly do that right this minute. But we would like to move to cedar. Um, we're, we're obviously open to feedback, and we want to adhere. I grew up in Groton, Massachusetts, and grew up around a very historical, beautiful. I lived in an old colonial that was built in the late um, 1800s, uh, and I, I respect the historic's opinion on this. But obviously, we're we're very excited. Uh, we were lived on Ship Street um, for 15 years, and uh, oh. another beautiful home. So we're we're interested in your feedback, but obviously we tried to keep this as you know as nice as we could that would really improve its distinction. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Commission. I drove past the house and and. Um, I had difficulty locating because I couldn't locate any house numbers. Are there some? There, I saw one. I saw one on the front. There's one on the front step, uh, front door, but not very visible, I guess, because I, I had to keep going back and forth to see. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the location where it, where it exists is on the front porch. Okay, um, I'll just, um, I'll start off with just a few comments. Um, um, I like the, I like the direction you're going in with this. I think you're making some, some minor modifications here. 
And I, I like how you're continuing the theme um, with the, uh, the large house up front um, on Pleasant Street, and you're keeping with the theme of just subordinate blocks and additions going forward. I think that works well. I think this is a pretty uh, basic, uh, simple, simple home, and I think what you want to incorporate with this is um, should have some simplicity too. And I think uh, if you look on page uh, seven, sheet seven, and I'm just looking at the proposed front entry, um, without without giving you um, specific guidance, I would just say that um, it, it looks, um, if, if we can simplify that, that entryway, maybe with the glass a little bit, um, maybe less curvature, um, maybe a little less glass, um, maybe something with the, uh, the, the, uh, the peak roof, the, um, the shed roof, something to make it a little bit more um, in keeping with the, with the main house. It seems to be, it's a, it departs a little bit from the original 1892 um, design. So I think just simplifying that a little bit, I think would, um, would help out. Um, on the rear, um, the same holds true for the rear entry. So just um, maybe some minor modifications there to simplify that. I'm just kind of looking at a straight on view on, on sheet eight that, um, that, that might be more appropriate for that rear entry. It's something picking up on, on, on some of the changes you might implement on, on, on sheet seven. Um, but that, that's what I have for starters. In terms of the, in terms of the window proposals, um, just need to go through with you in terms of what, what you plan on taking out, if they're, if they're old windows, if they can be reused at all. But I do think how you're keeping with the two over one uh, sequence throughout the house, I think that I think that works that works well. The uh, the chimneys, um, maybe we can have a little bit more discussion on, on that why why um, the existing one needs to be taken down and moved, and um, if that's the case, then obviously having two chimneys pretty close to one another. Um, it's not gonna. It's not gonna work so well. But maybe we can have a little bit more discussion regarding the plans for the chimney. Why? Why one needs to be taken down? I think if, if while you're doing that, just for a point of clarification, are you moving a chimney and taking one down, or is that still? No. So what we hope to do is put a, um, a fireplace in the existing kitchen area, which will now become a family room, and putting a gas fireplace in the front living room on the wall across from the windows on Pleasant Street. The existing chimney today is more of a, now is just an exit for the utilities from the basement. Um, we are not taking it down. Okay. It's not yet. That's existing, not being removed. Okay. So you're going to have three chimneys? Correct. Okay, need need to think about that a little bit. Is yeah, is and, uh, the question on that is is that a uh, is that a code violate? Is it an issue that our architect missed that is a uh, code issue? Uh, I'm just I, I don't know from a code standpoint, and Ben might be able to help us. I'm just thinking about the appropriateness of having. Um, you know, three chimneys closely spaced to one another on, on that roof. That's all. But, but if the one in the living room in front is a gas fireplace, that could theoretically be let out on the side between, on your side driveway between you and the coolies, theoretically, I think. And you wouldn't have a, a, an additional chimney there. It, yeah, if we put the fireplace on that wall, we, if we went gas, we could pipe it differently, but then you've got a steel type of contraption, not a traditional chimney. So just a thought. Um, we'd like to keep something that looks, it's, you know, old or not, a, a, a shining silver tube coming up the outside of our house. I understand. 
<laughs> you know, so. Are we talking about a gas unit on sheet two in the living room? Yes. Right, front living room. There currently is no fireplace in the house. So can you, the, the second fireplace, is that also a gas unit you're proposing? No, we're proposing a wood burning uh, chimney. And I'm sorry, what room is that in? That is now the kitchen slash family room. I, I see. Probably good with that. So to uh, Thomas's point, that one in the living room could be what's called a direct vent. It wouldn't need a chimney necessarily, but it would be a side vent. And there's a thimble on the outside. Um, you know, we, I don't know how the commission feels about that. We could box the ventilation thing. Not sure what that would look like. So it was not a metal, <laughs> it said before, tube on the side of our house. Less preferred, be less preferred by us, obviously. So I think it's, you know, so the, the trade off here is, you know, the three chimneys too busy for this structure versus having one of them be replaced by something that's coming out the side, I guess is sort of the question. Mm -hmm. Catherine? Um, beyond the chimneys, um, I have a couple of thoughts and questions for the commission. Um, when I drove by the site just to, to scope it out, I immediately was struck by the asymmetry on this Union Street side of the house and how the um, three upper story windows don't they're not symmetrical, and also the lower windows too. Um, and then I drove down Pleasant Street, and the house right next door really is clearly like the sister to this one, and yeah. it ultimately had a front entry at some point. It must have because it's clean, and I think um, it, they look the all the way down to the returns and the gable height. It's almost it's almost a mirror image. It has the bump out on the right hand side, the the bow window. It's really kind of the, I call it the sister to this. Um, have you thought about putting the entrance back on the um, Pleasant Street side at all? Was that then a thought out or considered? Um, not, not really just because of what it would do to what we want to keep as part of this house, which is the most beautiful part is the tall ceiling from the living room as it exists today, which is basically a large rectangle as you'll see from like the gate of sheet number um, plus accessing the house from Pleasant Street, you likely wouldn't walk in to that side of it. But you know, um, uh, the orange, the house in, in the interior has no. There would be no place to walk into. We would then have to build a some kind of bump out to let you walk into the house before you walk. Into living room and then the front hall which is actually a lovely space would be wasted it wouldn't be anything uh, if we were to rebuild it on pleasant street the banister the, yeah our banister stairway in that front hallway where that existing door is is just it's beautiful I, yeah. I feel like we have more taller than normal ceilings of some other homes that i saw in Groton and other towns that i've lived in um it, it's just it's really a nice entryway for us um and so our first thoughts and around maybe someday having a nice entry roundabout or something uh, off of unit wherever if that's ever agreed upon so moving it to pleasant street is really not something you know nor could i find any pictures that show anything like that previously okay um then I'm also thinking that the window package you were presenting um, for the, the front door has two big side lights, and I'm wondering if that's going to fit. Um, and the, the, the way the um, 
drawings are shown for the entry hall. I'm not sure if it will accommodate the side lights. They're not side lights. They can't be accommodated. There isn't enough space. Those are pilasters. They were uh, half a column just to give to ground the front door. It's yeah. actually, um, I'm very sad that we can't have side lights. Oh. Okay, so you have a fan, but no side lights. Those are pilasters. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so back to the gentleman earlier that mentioned that it looked a bit ornate. I wanted to jump up in. We may very well not have, um, we don't have an opportunity to let in much light by the door, so that was the concept of putting the lights above the door um, and having all those panes in the door that would be something we'd be very open to changing uh, but those are not windows on each side gotcha so i guess i'm curious um i don't have too much time on the board um when it comes to a house that has been altered to such a degree and the application supports further altering it in the direction from which I'm guessing it's it started out. I guess I'm trying to get my head around. Um, do you just sort of ignore what it was and proceed as <laughs> as it has been turned into? I, I'm having a hard time trying to get away from the, the Pleasant Street entrance. So, if I could jump in here on the the in. in in the interior of the house, the front hall is not just a pretty entry, it's two stories. It's a um, cathedral ceiling up to the spec. It's a lovely front entry. So to reorient the entire house to create a door on the skinny side that is a very lovely living room, it, if, you come, if you were inside the house, you would see that that's not how it was meant to. Uh, and the yard is, is is expansive on the Union Street side. Mm -hmm. So we don't even really have the space to bump out on the Pleasant Street side. We'd be cramming in a way to walk into the house. And then we'd have this ignored beautiful front entry that you would stand in and talk to people and use as a front entry. Mm -hmm. I think, Catherine, to your point, I think, you know, we don't know exactly what this was at, at one point. I think we can theorize that may have had that door on um, Pleasant Street, just given the style of this house. Um, but because of what it is now, you know, we can't, you know, force the return of what it was if we don't really know what it was. I think it's a matter of looking at it as it is in front of us um, and determining whether what the modifications that are being proposed are appropriate um, or not. I think it would be, you know, if we do have a form B on this, um, you know, in the form B that we're referencing, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that is, it's a, it's a, a form that sort of catalogs the, the history of the house and it, it was done, you know, it's usually, they've usually been done over the course of the past 20 or 30 years that sort of um, studies the, the house and sort of pulls together the history specific on these. So on some of the properties, um, a lot of the properties um, in town, we have four of these that exist that sort of show us a little bit about uh, what it may have been in the past. Um, and so I think if we can find that out just for the sake of determining what it may have been, but again, I think to my original point, I, I don't know that we can, um, you know, force a change to go back to what it was. It's a matter of looking at what it is now and whether what's being proposed is appropriate. Sure. And so on that point, I just want to reiter reiterate what Molly was just saying is that we hope that you would take into consideration the fact that the way that our house is set up the beauty of the inside of the house and how accessible that would be, even if you did find a picture miraculously or something that had something on the Pleasant Street side, it's really not something that we as homeowners would be interested in relocating or reintroducing to ruin our living room, to ruin the beautiful entrance that we do have. But we ask that you look at what 
we're trying to propose here uh, as an option. Yeah, and, and I think to that point, I mean, even if we did find the four B and the four B showed a door there on on Pleasant Street, I, I don't know that we can uh, ask you to put it back. Sure, no, I understand that. I yeah. think it's more for context of the history of this building and sort of kind of seeing what it what it was and what it is, just to understand how it sort of evolved over time. Mr. Chairman. Yep. Um, I did locate the form B on the. Uh, Mass Historical Commission MACRIS database. And I can put it up on the screen. It has very little information, unfortunately. Um, we would have, I would have to, once I get into the office, I can look further, but the, the Form B is not as um, filled out as some others. So it doesn't have the architectural significance or historical significance. Would you like me to, I can share it on my screen. Um, sure, uh, um, you might as well. Let me find yep. it. Hang on, let me just find. Okay. Hope I didn't lose, oh wait a minute, no. Well. Hmm. Sorry, I don't know what happened. What happened to it? Um, let me uh, let me grab it again. Sorry about that. Ben, you had a question. I think while Andrew's doing it. Yeah, I did. Um, I'll be brief. I, I think the oh. I think with the with the Union Street entrance, the problem with it today is it's awkward. I mean, with all due respect, I walk by the house all the time, and it always seems like it does belong on Pleasant Street. But I do believe your intent, that is the sellers, is obviously to make it more prominent, to make it look like the front entrance, even though it will be on the side. Um, and then perhaps some kind of hardscaping or landscaping in the future that would even make it more obvious that, yes, we're a Pleasant Street address, but this is our front door here on Union Street. Sherry, I do have the... Um I, I do have the form B, so. You should um, be able to share. You should be able to share your screen. Just look yeah, hang on. at the bottom. Yeah. And I think to that to that point, just to you know talk a little more about is is sort of you know these houses evolve over time, um, and you know our our goal is not always to restore to its original uh, intent, knowing that you know these properties evolve over time, and that's part of the history of these houses and what makes them so unique. So, um, you know, I, I think this is sort of a pretty unique property, and its style sort of is sort of is what is what really what's driving this conversation, and I think you know, the curiosity about what it what it may have been. So, um, all right, can you see this? Yeah. So, okay, yeah. All so, right, so basically, um, this is just a, a, the major alteration that they mentioned is the screen porch. This was done in 1990. We got a little bump out there for the um, that little porch off the Union Street side on yeah. 1990. So it was it was done before then. Hmm. So this is all that they have, unfortunately. Um, Could you scroll up just a little bit, the, the sure. previous? Well, there's certainly something, too. Well, if, if you notice, they say the house it's facing anywhere. Union Street is located on the corner uh, of this 18th Century Street right. and Union. So they, they continue to point out Union Street in the face of the house. Interesting. I'd like to add a thought about the chimneys while we have a minute. Um, in walking around the building, it's very tall. It's large. It's prominent. It's sort of dignified, sitting on a corner like that. Uh, I didn't notice three chimneys. I didn't notice the chimneys at all, to be honest. It's, it's very tall. And as I look at it sketched, it, it looks all right to me. You know, there's several chunks of house added to, on and three chimneys. It doesn't seem odd to me. So 
Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, so I'm just gonna um, so those that's that was all just feeling out how things go when something is modified and changed and evolved over the years, and that that's all good helpful information for me as I I just have some more comments I'd like to make about the front um, facade if that's okay. So I'm looking at sheet seven, and I'm also agreeing with Hans that um, the front porch does seem, I think it needs to be substantial in order to compensate for the asymmetry in the upstairs windows. Um, but I agree a little bit simpler and maybe um, just a simple gable without the shed of the porch would be more appropriate and um, in keeping it with the neighboring properties. And then I'm wondering about the appropriateness of the little deck off the kitchen. Um, and also there's a window well that is marked on page, oh, underneath the kitchen window, I think. And I'm just wondering how that would be handled. That's on the Union Street side um, for egress, because I guess, is that gonna be flush or will there be some kind of retaining wall around it? It doesn't seem to be indicated in the, um, the front elevation of the front elevation drawings. Yeah, it would be to the window well, it would be flush to the ground. And so have you, it sounds like it's still a question as to whether that window well is required I think that's why it was added. Yeah, so you're probably looking at um, some thin space in the basement, which may require that second means of egress. Is that the intent behind adding the window well? No, um, it's a traditional field stone wall basement. Um, we weren't planning on doing anything finished in the basement. All right, so code would not require that you have egress if it's not going to be finished. I mean, obviously you're taking out the bulkhead because it's going to be like in there. And we're, yeah, and there's a stairwell going down to the basement uh, off of that mudroom. So the reason for that additional bump out was that the basement staircase is currently where that family room is that splits the kitchen in the family room to that existing porch screened in room. So in order to use that space and that porch that's all glass, uh, the basement stair was moved to the back of the house, hence the reason for that addition, that little bit of a, a, a jog out in the back. The kitchen deck gives us access from the kitchen to the back, but if you look at the picture on sheet seven, far left, very minimal, um, very little view of a, of a deck. So the one thing that that deck doesn't show is that a railing will be required because of the number of stairs or risers. You're gonna have to have a railing on that since you're, one, two, three. yeah, you're four risers. So we'll need a railing on the stairs. And if the, the deck itself is, I believe, 20 inches low to the ground, it won't need a guardrail. But as soon as you go above the 28 inches, you're going to need a guardrail as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that we, makes sense. Yeah, we included that in the thought on um, the 28 inches was included. I don't know why it would have why it's not depicted with the railing. Yeah, I, thought, I thought maybe so it might not be. It might be that we're planning on having it be inside the 28 inches. It looks like it shows up on the floor plan. There's an indication of a railing there. It just oh. they probably didn't pick it up in the elevation drawing. Okay. And then I'll, I'll I'll yield my time. The only other thing I'd like to comment on is is your your proposed entry on Union. It is too wide at 18 feet for the original volume of the house. It's just out of balance. Yes, it needs to be larger than it is now, um, but I would I would urge you to get rid of the shed wing portion uh, 
um, so that it is a little bit more subdued. Well, it, what is in proportion if 18 feet is not? Is there a calculation that you would make? So that section that you see there now without the shed portion. We actually copied a house on Middle Street uh, with similar proportions. We actually copied the measurements even entirely. So I'm surprised. I thought that that, okay. Well, in another point, I think somebody had said earlier, it might have been Carol, about the tallness of our house and putting something on the, the side of the house that kind of gives it some balance because it is very tall. Um, I guess I don't understand. I'm not sure who was speaking of that with Ben. Um, the shed portion of the front, are you saying remove that entirely? Right, so it would just be a gable. It would just be the gable that you see where the light and that frames the door. So you want so you're suggesting that we take like four eight feet off of it uh, let's see well it's, it's not it's not scaled yeah it might be four feet either side so that would leave roughly 10 at the front entry so we couldn't so that would do away with us being able to put a chair on our front porch or or even take away that spindly thin look because the house is so tall. So I, I'm not really in agreement at all with that, just to be frank. I want to... Uh... So there are a couple other committee members here. I'm not going to speak for everyone else, but those that have spoken, we would encourage you to do some studies on that. Do you have studies that you can share or examples from town that would be applicable that could help us? I mean, what, what, what studies are produced? you know that we could look up? So, so something simplified. No, I can't give you a study in town, but I can tell you something more simplified than in keeping with the, with the architecture of the existing house. And, and I think um, your architect will, I think it will be your architect sort of understanding the, the comments and taking a look at some other options, but I'm sure that they could. Um, you Which know, is what's meant by a study. Right. It would be your architect sort of taking another look um, at the drawing and taking a look at another option or two for consideration. Uh, yeah. yeah, the question on that, I guess, for everybody is that if you look at some of the other houses that have shed roof that wrap around their house, to do away with the shed roof entirely in this, I mean, when it's taking over a considerable amount of that side of a house, I guess that's a, a bit of a, why would an, a wraparound shed roof of other houses be acceptable versus that of a, a shed roof? Are you saying, are you asking us to support, like, make it a little bit smaller or bring it way, way, way down? I guess I, I, I want to understand collectively that. Uh, go ahead. Hey, hey Bill, um, here's what I would say. So I think you've got, you've got a a couple folks in the commission that are, are looking for something that's um, that's just got a gable, and you know what you've got here in front of us is you've got a you got a shed and a gable, right? So um, maybe you want to do kind of an outside the box, um, and, and what if that shed goes the length of the entire um, you know main building, so extended further, just. You know, do a study. Show us what it looks like with a just a, just a shed on that. That you may see some other buildings around town that have that. Do something with just a, uh, you know, just a gable. You know, cut it back, and and maybe you come up with another option for us that, that we can we can look at. Because um, we're we're design review. You know, we can't draw this for you, but if you could just come up with a few different a few different features that kind of look at look at alternatives for us, I think it would be great. But I think I think you're hearing simplify from 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 for most people that have spoken so far. You, you got some you got some curvatures in there, you got you know multiple elements. If you could just kind of tone this down just a little bit, I think that would be helpful. If 
Does that help at all? It definitely does yeah. because we actually have a couple of iterations that we worked through and without any bushes or any landscaping, it, they all needed more of a substantial base because of the house having sort of a townhouse effect. Um, so we'd be happy to show you. Uh, we did, in fact, do just what you said, had it run the length of the house, but then it cut off that other piece and made it look like it just looked kind of dumpy. And then we had it kept it as just the front door and then a little pathway out to the driveway. Um, so we, we were absolutely happy to share all of those with you. Um, and I hope that you'll find that we really feel like the house needs a grounding. It needs a substantial uh, setting because otherwise it sort of has, uh, as we've talked about a couple times now, sort of a tall and townhousey look that isn't appropriate to me or to the street or, or to the neighbor's house. Well, that would be helpful. Thank you. So, um, any other commission members with some thoughts? So, I think, you know, what I'm to kind of summarize what I'm hearing, and, and I guess before I do that, um, you know, sometimes we do um, make a site visit to the property and, and walk the site with with you, um, the applicant, um, and collectively as a group. Um, you know, I know this is a pretty prominent spot, so I'm sure most people are pretty familiar with this, but I'll ask the commission, do you feel um, that a site visit um, would be helpful to understand the context? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think what, what I would suggest and, um, is that we do that in advance of the next hearing, and I think what I'm hearing just generally is that there seems to be general support um, for what you're looking to do here. There's lots of improvements um, that you're proposing to make um, to the house, um, and you know it, it sounds like we're down to um, details, and um, you know the porch sort of being the biggest of the details to really, um, you know, study. So I think um, if you're able to uh, look at some other options or show us the options that you kind of walked through before um, on that uh, porch on Union Street, I think um, as you look at that and the potential for simplification of some of the details, some of the trim, um, you know, maybe sort of taking that simplification of some of those trim details to the rear um, porch that exits out the back. Um, and it's it sounds like it's about simplification of some of these items as opposed to sort of major departures um, from what you're showing. Um, and, you know, I don't know if, if, if I missed anything from the commission. I want to make sure that uh, the sellers have some direction to consider for um, the next the next step the next hearing. The, the only thing I would add is about these chimneys and their height. Um, if it's going to be a gas unit, then the code would look to the manufacturer of the gas unit to take how tall that chimney needs to be off the roof line. And I know it can be hard to pick a gas unit this early in the process. But that's what's going to dictate the, the height of that chimney. Yeah, that's an easy ask. And we've already started looking at, you know, gas fireplaces that are <laughs> nicer than your normal just flame, you know, that's that sort of so we're, we're looking at those. So um, does that give you um, enough? information that that clear um, I want to make sure that we can we're helping you um, get to where you want to be here sure no it, it, it was helpful and, and as I started off at the beginning um, you know we understand that there's a pre-existing house with with a history here and we'd like you to take into consideration what we're trying to do to 
we really thought it was super simple, um, the design that we came up with that kept with its existing structure. So, um, yeah, we look forward to, you know, the next steps and some of the iterations or suggestions that you would make. Um, and we're hoping to, you know, move quickly. So if we could have a, as we were online for the past hour prior to coming on and hearing some of the suggestions. So if there is a meeting before the next meeting, we would love to figure out how we can get next drawings in front of you and things like that. So I think, so, um, and we want to make sure we can get you through this process efficiently too, but I think um, with a site visit and looking to schedule a site visit, um, you know, typically we'll do that before the next meeting. Um, and I don't know that there will be enough time to do that site visit before we have that sort of interim meeting that you heard about on, on the last hearing. So I think if we get that site visit in before our October meeting, our next meeting would be, uh, Andrea, I think you mentioned October 15th. Um, so I think typically we'll try and set up the site visit between now and October 15th, typically on a Saturday morning, and Andrea can sort of coordinate um, that time and date specifically with you. Okay. Okay. I, I will do that. We, um, I'll just uh, float some dates and uh, we do not have to go inside the house. We will just be on the outside of the house. We'd love to show you that front entry. <laughs> oh, we'd love to see it then. Just so you can understand and see that living room as well. Uh, Fabulous. The layout and the way that you would structure any type of internal like this. Sure. We don't turn down an invitation. That's great. That can help us solve the mystery. Right. <laughs> great. Well, thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. So. One yeah. last piece of business. Right. So do we have. Um, so, well, a couple um, things. So one is the, the minutes, right? Um, so Andrea sent the minutes out. I don't know if there's any thoughts or Andrea, anything to report out on the minutes there. Closest thing I had to have thought was Andrea is the historical administrator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I am sorry that they came out so late. Um, Sherry had the, the July minutes to me earlier, and I just been like crazy here, so I apologize. Do you, has anybody had a chance to read them? No. I got to get to the meeting, so I missed them. I got them. Okay. Tell us all about them. Oh, that's <laughs> fine. Did you read them? Uh, Hans, did you have a chance to read them? I did. I did read them, Andrea. You did? Yeah, I have no changes. Okay. Justin, what about you? I've I've read them as well. Good. Catherine, I did. I read them. I read them. I know, but do you have any changes? No, no changes. No changes. Okay. Can I? So, what? Do you have to make a motion to approve them? I say aye. <laughs> Okay. Anybody else? Is anybody uncomfortable with that? Okay, great. We need so a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Great, thank you. I've got a question. Go ahead. Carol? I've got a question. Did, were we supposed to vote in June? To re up your presidency? Did I miss a meeting? I don't think I did. No. No. When do you normally vote? Um, well, don't forget, Mike was um, uh, his first meeting was April. He was already, he was vice chair. He was vice chair. So his. Um, he just moved into the spot. There's nothing we had to vote on in June? 
No, I don't think so. Michael, you're doing a very good job. Yes, you are. Okay. I'd vote for you. I would vote again. I'd vote for me too. <laughs> uh, well, so, you know, before we, we close, obviously we, we had two, um, you know, uh, an appointment of a voting member in addition of a new member. Um, but tonight we're also losing uh, a member from the commission. Uh, Thomas, is, oh. uh, his uh, term has concluded. Um, and tonight is unfortunately um, his last uh, meeting. Been, uh, yeah, it's been it's been six years. Six wow, years. Good wow. Party. wow. Yeah, and and yeah, so much had a huge influence on on the commission, not only in, in how we operate, but obviously in, in all the properties he's been involved in um, over the last six years. So, um, you know, thank you for that commitment and the dedication to you know the commission and you know town of Hingham Hing at large. So um, thank you, Thomas. You know, we're certainly going to miss you. We are. Thank you. It's, it's, it's been, uh, it's been a, a great privilege to be on the, on the commission. And I've learned a lot. And I met some uh, really incredible people and some very dedicated people. So, uh, so I really appreciate that. Um, Justin, congratulations. Thank um, you. It's going to be great. Um, and Mary Ann, it couldn't be more appropriate that you uh, oh. join the commission now that uh, Virginia is uh, looking down. She would be very happy with that. So, uh, mm -hmm. so that's Those great. Are big boots um, to fill. Great. And, and in, in, in retrospect, I, I think you know it's been uh, it's been a real great serving under uh, Hans's leadership, uh, Virginia's leadership, and Michael your leadership. So uh, so. I really appreciate that. All three um, have been doing great, so uh, good luck going forward. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We will you miss you, Thomas. You made a great contribution. Well, you are welcome to poke me if you see me on the street. Okay. Hey, Thomas, what are you going to do with all your free time? <laughs> I mean, come on. I really don't have that much free time. It's crazy, but I really feel like I don't. I don't believe it. <laughs> We're going to look you up. I appreciate it, Hans. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're the best. Okay. All right. Well, then I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Wait, don't we need to pick a date for site visit? Um, I can, I can, well, you want me to look at the calendar now? Just do this. what we've done in the past, sorry. I didn't yes, ask. No, you are right. You are right. Just it helps to have the calendar on. Yep. Okay. Sorry. No. I kiboshed the, the motion. <laughs> <laughs> so our meeting is on the 15th. So we have um, we have several weekends to choose from. Um, let's see, Saturday, the 3rd of October, um, the 10th of October, um, and then we also still have uh, a Saturday left in September. So, any preferences, anybody? The sooner the better, while the weather's nice. Yeah. Um, Andrea, is, is the, the last weekend that we have in this month, is that enough time for notice? Uh, for a site visit? What is today? The 17th. Oh, yeah, we have plenty of time. That would be, uh, it would be the 26th. Um, and it just requires a 48 hour notice. Oh, great. Okay. Works for me, Andrea. Michael. The 26th? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm around, and Thomas is just diagonal, so he'll be there too. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you He's go. He's got a lot of free time. Hang out with us. That's right. Old time sake. And if you don't show up, I'm going to egg your house. <laughs> God, that's funny. All right. Andrea, has there been any um, update on town hall opening up at meetings and nothing? No, uh, we're still, I don't know, Sherry, I don't know if you've heard anything, but it, I think for the foreseeable future, I mean, they're even talking about um, uh, another town hall, I mean, another uh, 
all town meeting and in the fall, so we may be sitting there in our overcoats because it's <laughs> going to be outside. Yeah. <laughs> snow. And our mufflers. <laughs> you know, if, if they open the school up uh, full time, I, I would think that would coincide with that. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but we still don't. Uh, the public still does not have access. So, and Sherry and I are in the office on alternate weeks. So, next week is my week in the office. Crazy times. All right. All right. Do you have a date on? Yeah. 